Well, the Valley of the Sun definitely living up to its name today. Look at that. The desert is in full bloom. And a happy Saturday afternoon, everybody, from the Peoria Sports Complex. It's Cactus League. Cleveland Indians here at the Peoria Sports Complex. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Mariners Baseball. I'm Rick Riz along with Mike Blowers. Dave Valley will join us in the bottom half of the fifth inning. And Blow, their spot's still open in the starting rotation at four and five. We had some big news yesterday. John Garland has exercised his opt-out clause. So now it's a group of four guys looking for spots four and five. And I think this one is going to go down to the wire. You look at Bonderman coming back from his surgery. He has thrown the ball well. Mauer, really one of the big stories in spring training, leading the Cactus League in the ERA. Ramirez has pitched well also. And then today we're going to get a chance to see Blake Bevin again. But I think Bevin, if he can go out and have a good outing again, Rick, I think he's really got a good shot at making the rotation. He's a durable guy. I think he's made some improvements in what he's done this year. Here you see a good curveball from him. He's also sinking the ball a little bit more, trying to keep it on the ground. The one thing we know about Blake is he will throw strikes. He will throw a lot of strikes, and any manager will like that. So we're going to get a chance again to see Blake this afternoon. Blake Bevin, an 11-game winner last year. The offense has been rolling, and one guy who has been smoking hot is Mariners' first baseman, Justin Smoke. And again, for Justin, I think coming into camp this year, he finished up last year in September strong, coming into camp just to get his confidence going. I think you'd like to see him have a good spring. Well, he's having a great spring. See, it's his line drive into right field. But I, I think the biggest thing to me is Eric Wedge giving him a vote of confidence as you take a look at this home run, saying that he's my first baseman. I don't want to answer any more questions about him. He said it right at the beginning of spring training. I think that took a lot of pressure yeah. off of Justin Smoke, and he's having a great spring training. So the first step is well underway for Justin Smoke. And, Mike, the Mariners have a nice addition. And Robert Andino, who was with the Baltimore Orioles last year, this guy can help you out at shortstop, at second base, and at third base. He's made some nice plays defensively, and the guy can hit. He's going to provide a lot of flexibility for Eric Wedge. He can play all the infield spots, Rick, as you mentioned. He also has some pop in his bat. Here's a nice solid line drive, base hit back up the middle. He had a good year with the Orioles last year. He's shown that he can do some things. Every now and then surprise you with a home run. But the biggest thing is that he's versatile on the infield. If you take a look at this swing from him, the gapper out into right field where he ends up getting a double out of it. But I, I think this is a big improvement for the Mariners. He can give Ackley a day off if he wants to against a left-hander. Same with Kyle Seeger. So it gives him a little more flexibility. But Andino has also played well. So the Mariners on a roll. They have won seven of their last eight ball games, coming away with a win last night over the uh, San Diego Padres. And today they take on the Cleveland Indians from the Peoria Sports Complex. The fans, the kids are coming into the ballpark. Fans have already staked out their claim out there on the berm. The burgers are heating up, so are the hot dogs and the sausages. And we are getting set for Mariners baseball, Cactus League style. It's the Mariners and the Indians back with a lineup some more after this timeout. The real season starts. 
Today on Root Sports, Blake Bevan takes the mound as the Mariners face the Indians. It's one more chance for the Texan to impress and earn a spot in the rotation. The Cactus League is all about competition this spring for Seattle, from the starters to the outfield. Those position battles head towards a conclusion next. And again, welcome back to Peoria, Arizona. And Mike Blower, somebody up there, has a bird's eye view of today's Cactus League matchup between the Mariners and the Cleveland Indians on a beautiful Saturday here in the Valley of the Sun. Nice crowd this afternoon. It is the Mariners against the Indians. The Indians have a new manager in Terry Francona. The Mariners are 18 and 8 for the Cactus League season. They won last night. And Mike Blowers, it looks like Felix Hernandez is in mid-season form. He was great last night. As you take a look at his overall numbers, pitched six innings last night, gave up just two hits. How about nine strikeouts over the six innings? 70 pitches thrown by Felix. 50 of those, Rick, he threw for strikes, and he had everything working last night. We saw a tremendous changeup from Felix at times. Here's the good curveball. He thought it was his best curveball of the spring. But then there's a changeup to the left-handers. He's also located his fastball well. Again, 70 pitches for him in yesterday's game. 50 of them for strikes, Rick. So he looked like he's ready to go for opening day. It was a tremendous performance with the nine strikeouts. And the Mariners get ready to open up the season April the 1st in Oakland. Both managers, Eric Wedge for the Mariners and Bob Melvin for the A's, have named their starting pitchers. No surprise. No surprise. This will be the sixth time for Felix Hernandez. It ties in with Randy Johnson. And then, of course, Brett Anderson. Tough left-hander. Throws hard. Usually causes some problems for the Mariners. So that should be a great pitching matchup to start the year. And we're going to visit with Felix coming up on our telecast from Peoria during this ball game. The Mariners have taken the field ready for the lineups. Thank you, Rick. And for manager Terry Francona leading things off. Carrera, then it's Mike Avilas, former Royal and Boston Red Sox hit second. Phelps, Giambi. Giambi trying to make this club. You can see 429 career home runs for Giambi. He hits cleanup. Carson, Marsan. And then they have some of their top prospects, Lindor, Ramirez, and Naquin rounding out the nine for the Indians. And look at the numbers today yeah, for Blake Bevan. A 4-4-3 ERA for Blake, 11 game winner last year. He's really had a good spring training this year, and he's trying to make this club again, looking for the 4-5 spot in the rotation. Blake in the mix for that. Big Texan doesn't walk anybody, and here's a look at the defense, Mike. Yeah, Raul Lubani is getting the start in left field. Now we're going to see Casper Wells has been bay for a couple of days, but Wells out in center. Saunders is in right. Miller getting the start at third base. Andino and Seeger playing up the middle. Justin Smoke at first, and Jesus Montero will do the catching. There's the numbers for Blake in the Cactus League. A 3.86 ERA for Blake. 14 innings pitched. He's given up just 13 hits. Nine strikeouts for him. But the big one, Rick, is the zero walks. No walks the entire spring training for Blake. He has thrown a lot of quality strikes. And how about that? Because at the start of the spring, anyway, Mike, it's tough for the starters maybe to get a feel for the fastball and the breaking ball. But this guy, like you said, hasn't walked anybody. I think it's been apparent that he's put in a lot of work over the course of the winter, made a couple of changes, wanted to be more upright and throw downhill, and that certainly has worked well for him. And I think it's made his curveball a little bit better, too. He's got a good one. Well, the Mariners looking for their 19th win of the Cactus League season. Things are starting to wind down here at spring training 2013. What a day out for baseball. The fans are out. Here at the Peoria Sports Complex, great crowd up there in the berm beyond the outfield wall. And we are ready to go. Blake Bevan has completed his warm-up tosses, and Ezekiel Carrera, former Mariner, will lead things off. Indians will have a different look this year, especially inside that dugout where Terry Francona is the new manager, replacing Manny Acta. The Indians last year were just 68 and 94. Here's the first pitch of the afternoon, and it's a little low for ball one, and we are underway. And for Blake, fastball will be 90, 89 to 90, 91 miles an hour. We'll also use a curveball and a changeup. Relies on his defense, Mike. Throw strikes. There's a little broken bad looper into straightaway shallow center. That's going to drop in front of Casper Wells, and right away, Carrera is on at first base. So one on for the tribe. Well, we mentioned his fastball at 90 miles an hour. He'll stay right about there, but he'll get his curveball the other night. His curveball was at 71 miles an hour, so he was able to take a lot off of that pitch. What does that do for a hitter? 
It messes up your timing. It's it, it hitting his timing, and that's what Blake uses that pitch for. His changeup is actually much harder than his curveball, but I think the other thing with it, it has such a big break to it, it's hard to square that pitch yeah. up. 77 degrees here in Peoria, and we understand it's 44 degrees back home in the Seattle area. Here's third baseman Mike Gavilas. He was with the Red Sox last year. Hit 250, 13 home runs, and 60 runs batted in. First pitch strike to Avilas. On deck, first baseman Cord Phelps. You're going to see some different names in this Indian lineup for the 2013 season. And a move to first base to get Carrera back to the bag. Terry Francona was not managing last year. Bobby Valentine took over for the Boston Red Sox. That didn't work out too well for Boston. But this guy had so much success, Mike, uh, with the Red Sox. Won World Series titles in 04 and 07 with Boston. He broke the curse of the Bambino in 2004. That was their first title win. In 86 years, their previous World Series win, the Red Sox, was 1918. I would have to think that the fans in Cleveland are really excited to have him on board as the manager of this club. They're trying to get things turned around. As you mentioned, they struggled last year. He's a good baseball man, and as you mentioned, did a great job with the Red Sox. His dad, Tito Francona, played for the Cleveland Indians back in the late 50s and the early 60s. And I think in 1959 or 1960, his dad, Tito, hit 363. Runner goes, swinging a foul out of play in the first base side, and the count is one and two on Avila. So Francona putting the game in motion. A little hit and run, and Carrera heads out back to first base. And I think you're right. I don't think that was a straight steal by the swing by Avila. It looked like he was just trying to pepper the ball over to the right side of the infield, so that was a hit and run. Kyle Seeger getting the start over at second base. Mike, so manager Eric Wedge really is. Move guys around to find out, uh, you know, what kind of options he will have starting on April the 1st. I think it's a good idea. They're all going to need a, a break every now and then over the course of the summer. So he gets a chance to move some people around. And, of course, you hope they all stay healthy. But that's rare when that happens on a 162-game schedule. Runner goes again and a swing and a miss. Strike three. Throw down to second. And it's not in time. Carrera with a steal of second base as Bevin strikes out Mike Avilas. One out for the tribe here in the top of the first inning. Take a look at the swing on a breaking ball by Avilas out in front of it. Couldn't lay off of it. Tough pitch to throw on. Montero was able to get rid of it quickly. But Carrera steals the bag. His 10th stolen base of the spring. One on and one away for the Indians. Just underway. No score. And that'll bring up first baseman Cord Phelps. There's a look at Terry. First met Terry Francona back in 1980. I was broadcasting for the Memphis Chicks. We were at Double A Farm Club for the Montreal Expos. Fly ball left field toward the line. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Over to third goes Carrera. The throw in by Ibanez. So a single for Phelps, Cord Phelps, and now the Indians have runners at first and third with one out. Take a look at the swing by Phelps. It's a running fastball. You can see the ball moving away from him. It's a good piece of hitting as Ibanez fields it and gets it back to the infield quickly. Carrera holding up at second just in case the ball was caught. So he wasn't able to score. So Blake could still get out of this inning with a double play ball, Rick. And here he is, designated hitter Jason Giambi looking to uh, find a new home with the Cleveland Indians, Mike. Yeah, he's, he's somebody. I wasn't sure if he was going to play anymore. And he was invited into camp with the Indians and looks like he's done enough potentially to make this club, which I think is a bit of a surprise. Jason, obviously a veteran guy, been around for a long time, but having a good spring. Tell you what, at one point he thought he was done. And I'll tell you why. Down low for ball one, he wanted an interview for the managerial job with the Colorado Rockies. That's and right. eventually went to Walt Weiss. Look at that, 429 career home runs below. He's had a great career, former teammate of mine back in the days when he was coming up with Oakland before he moved on to the Yankees. Up and away, ball two on Giambi, two balls, 
And no strikes. He's always had a great idea of the strike zone, right? It's one of the things about Jason that I, I can remember, even as a young player when, when he and I were teammates, he always had a good idea of the strike zone. He makes pitchers put the ball on the plate. That's pretty good for a power hitter because eventually you're going to get something out over the plate and he'll do something with it. And a strike. Two and one on Giambi. Well, right now, Blake Bevel would like to see him hit the ball to Kyle Seeger out of second yeah. base. See if he can get a double play and get off the field. Blake again fighting to get into the rotation. It's like we're down to four guys now trying to get the last two spots of the rotation. Blake last year, 11 and 11 in 25 starts. That was sent down to Tacoma where he went 4 0 in six starts. Pop up left side of the diamond. Coming up to shortstop, Robert Andino is there, squeezes it. And a big second out for Blake Bevan. Two on and two away. And that'll bring up right fielder Matt Carson. Blake going with the off speed pitch and he kept it away from Jim. I think he was trying to get him to roll over on that pitch, but ends up getting a pop up in the infield. That'll work. Beautifully. And Dino had an easy play getting the started shortstop this afternoon. Seager at second. Brad Miller at third. Smoke at first. Matt Carson hitting 273 for the spring last season at 227. Four RBIs. Ball and one. Spent a little time with the twins last year. Skipper Eric Wedge on your left and pitching coach Carl Willis. Both working on the goatees. Breaking ball down and away. Ball one, one ball and one strike. That's a slow curve ball we were talking about, Rick. That one again at 71 miles an hour. He's trying to get the hitters out in front of that if he can, maybe even chase it if he can throw it in the dirt. There you go, 13 pitches, eight of them for strikes. Round ball wide to third, diving, sliding stop. Miller over to second, and it's in time to Seeger to get Cord Phelps. What a play by the rookie, Brad Miller. Way to his left, and he gets Blake Bevin out of the jam. No runs, two hits, and two left on. Underway, we go to the bottom of the first. Indians nothing, and the Mariners coming up. Been waiting for the price. Well, no scores. We go to the bottom of the first inning here in Peoria, Mariners and the Indians. And now for a look at the Mariners lineup, here is Mike Flowers. And for manager Eric Wedge, changing things up again today as normal in spring training. But leading things off, it'll be Michael Saunders getting a good look at Michael in that leadoff spot. And Dino Ibanez, then Justin Smoke, nine extra base hits. What a spring he's having. He's also hitting 386 with four home runs. And it's Seager, Montero, Wells, Shopping. 
And Brad Miller with a fine play to end the top of the first inning will round out the 9 for the Mariners. Take a look at Scott Kazmir. This is 2010, the last time he pitched for the Angels. And you can see his numbers, IERA to 594. Quite a story here in spring training. Rick will tell you more about that. That's the last time that he pitched in the major leagues. Yeah, last year he was pitching in an independent league, Sugarland, Texas. Michael Saunders shortens up to bunt and he takes a look at ball one. But he wanted to go there just to pitch to figure it out himself after you know having a rough time the last couple of years in the big leagues with the Angels. Line drive, base in at the right field. Saunders with a leadoff single here at the bottom of the first inning. And Sugarland, that particular ball club in the Independent League down there in Texas, same club that uh, Roger Clemens' son played for, and Roger even pitched for that team. Take a look at his numbers when he was playing in Sugarland. At 14 starts, three and six record, a 5-3-4 ERA for him. 64 innings pitch, 51 strikeouts, a little bit wild. 33 walks. Mm -hmm. That's a big number for him. Shortstop Robert Andino takes down low for ball one. The story that we heard about Casper was that you know he had a pitching mound in his backyard. He just wanted to start from scratch, go back to the drawing board, and get his mechanics back. For those that don't remember, number one pick for the Rays, a lot of promise for the young man. Moved on to the Angels eventually. Line drive, right center field, a base hit for Andino Saunders, heading for third. Naquin's throw to third, not in time. So back to back singles for the Mariners here in the bottom of the first inning and they've got runners at first and third with nobody out. Take a look at the swing by Andino. Solid base hit into right center field. He's a young man that's going to help this club a lot and I think again give some flexibility to Eric Wedge. He'll be coming off of the bench as the utility guy. Nice pickup by Jack Sorensic during the course of the offseason. Here is left fielder Raul Ibanez with seven U's. Great to have this guy back. Third time with the ball club. His son RJ was in the clubhouse this morning and he got a uniform. Jason Phillips' son as well. And uh, man, they had a great time somewhere out there in the lower fields. They came back covered in dirt. As you should, right? Exactly. Two kids going out there in the field. And Sliding around, probably diving for baseballs. Ibanez is hitting 324 this spring. Three home runs, tossed to first base, and that'll get Andino back to the bag. And Mike, you know, if you take a look what Jack did during the offseason, this club is going to be much improved offensively. It's going to be, I think, a lot better. And just the look of the lineup again, having the veteran guys hitting in the middle of the lineup, which mm -hmm. the Mariners didn't have last year. Will make a difference. Take some of the pressure off of the younger players. Oh, yeah. Will it ever? Check swing. Raul didn't go. Ball one, one, and one. And Jack will join us in the top half of the fifth inning of today's ball game. Or excuse me, the fourth inning. Big swing and a miss. One and two. That was a good pitch for Raul to hit. It was a breaking ball that was up in the zone. It would have been easy for him to get that ball into the outfield somewhere to pick up the runner at third. He swings through it. Lined in the right field. Another base hit for Ibanez. And here comes Saunders on to score. And the Mariners have a 1 0 lead. Down to second is Andino. As Carson gets to throw back into the infield. 1 0 Mariners leading the tribe. Uh, base hits by Saunders, Andino, and Ibanez. Since I've been down here over the last week, Ibanez has done a lot of this, hitting the ball hard. Solid base hit for Raul, picks up an RBI. Another pitch that was up in the zone, he takes advantage mm -hmm. of it. Had a great look at it. Still nobody out, and here's first baseman Justin Smokes, which hitter now batting from the right side. As you look at the base runners, Andino at second, Ibanez at first. What a spring for this young man. Fouled back, very aggressive. He was looking for that pitch, Mike, the way he swung at it. I think so. He, uh, we just mentioned that he missed the pitch before, and he came right back with it, and Roll didn't miss it that time. Solid line drive. Which, by the way, when you look at Casimir's number, that's the first turn run he's given up in the spring, so the Mariners getting to him early with three straight hits. Outside, ball one, one, and one. 
Casbear, 29 years of age. And when he was with Tampa Bay, Mike, I mean, so many times, and also the Angels, so many times on the DL, he spent seven stints on the DL in his major league career. When he first came up, he was in the mid 90s with his fastball. Um, doesn't have that now. He's 90 miles an hour now with his fastball, so he's lost some. But that may be one of the reasons why he's having success. All of a sudden, you can't pitch in the middle of the plate anymore, and you start mm -hmm. hitting the corners and, and sinking the ball. Probably is helping him not having the type of velocity that he used to because he looked more like a thrower to me when he was younger. And the air not a play on the first base side, and it's still one and two on smoke. Justin batting 386. And four home runs. A lot of good things this spring. Home run last night, opposite field. And he left handed as you take a look at Dave Hansen. Line drive, left field line, a fair ball in toward the corner. And Dino's going to score. Ibanez, the third, will be stopped there. Up of the ball is Carrera, gets the throw in. Justin Smoke with a double and an RBI. And the Mariners now lead the Indians two to nothing. And Justin continues his hot hitting this spring. Well, the Mariners as a, as a team have been hot this spring. Take a look at this. Tries to throw a slider down and into him, and Justin stays with it. It's a solid line drive into left field. Well, we've seen a lot of this this spring from the Mariner hitters. You want to grab a bat? No, I'm fine sitting here next oh. to you, Rick, but thank you. Okay. And I'm not saying anything against Scott Casbear. I'm just, you know, with all the hitting that's going. Here's Kyle Seager as you look at the base runners, second and third. 0 oh and 1. And that pitch was up. Well, that's what you want to do. A lot of times, starting pitchers, if they're going to struggle, they'll struggle early, Rick. And mm -hmm. if they're going to pitch up and in the middle of the plate, you want to jump on them. And so far, the Mariners have been able to do that. Four straight hits for the Mariners to start this game. Manager Terry Francona looking on. Inside for ball one, one and one. Seager last year, 259 hitter, and he led the ball club with his 20 home runs and 86 runs batted in. And Mike, I think he's going to have more than his share of doubles. I would agree. I, I, I think that I think this year he, he will hit for a higher average. Two and one. And if he can be somewhere in the same neighborhood with the home runs and the RBIs that he had, Rick, I, I think you'll take that because yeah. he, he's going he's going to be, I, I think, a guy that you're going to see in that 290 range a lot in his career. He's, he just has such a good swing and a good idea. He's still trying to learn, young player, but. I think he has the ability to do that. He uses the entire field, which yeah. is what you want to see. You have to camp guy and knows how to hit. I mean, just a couple of years ago, he was at Class A High Desert, led the minor leagues with 192 hits. And a nice first full year in the major leagues last year. Strike three called on the outside corner. Kyle disagrees with the uh, home plate umpire, Dan Bellino. And that's the first out of the inning. Yeah, I think Kyle thought this pitch was off the plate away. It looked like a cutter or maybe a slider. And it looked like a little cut fastball. And you can see right there, Kyle had a good look at it, was surprised when he called it a strike. Here is Jesus Montero, one out for the Mariners. Two runs are in and two on. Bottom of the first. Little fly ball into shallow right field. Carson coming in and he makes a basket catch. And the runners have to stay. Banez, a little bluff over at third base, but goes back to the bag. So Montero flies out to Matt Carson. And there's two outs for the Mariners here in the first. Scott Casimir made his major league debut with Tampa Bay in August of 2004 against the Mariners in Seattle. Wants a new baseball. Guess who gave up? Got the first hit off of Casimir. The first hit that he gave up. Edgar Martinez. Here's Casper Wells. Popped up behind home plate in front of us. Into the crowd and the count is 0 1 on Wells. 
guy right there, Raul Ibanez, also singled in the bottom of the first inning with Casimir's major league debut. So Casimir quite familiar with the Mariners. 0 oh and 2 on Wells. Here you go, 21 pitches. A lot of pitches in the first inning for Casimir, but he is throwing strikes, 15 strikes out of the 21 pitches that he has thrown. Inside on Wells for ball one, one ball and two strikes. Saunders, Andino, Ibanez, three consecutive singles, and then Justin Smoke, an RBI double. Swing and a miss at a fastball, strike three, and that will retire the side. Well, the Mariners get a couple of runs here in the bottom of the first inning. We're going to be joined by King Felix, Felix Hernandez, as we go to the top half of the second. Mariners two, the Indians nothing. It's the Mariners two and the Indians nothing as we go to the top half of the second on a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Peoria. Blake Bevan going through his warm up tosses. We get a chance to visit with Felix Hernandez who was just tremendous last night. Six innings. Felix only 70 pitches. We're taking a look at your numbers from last year that 306 ERA. But tell us a little bit about last night nine strikeouts. You fanned six in a row and retired the last 13 batters that you faced. Well, yes, I feel pretty good yesterday. I mean, I had a lot of command in my fastball and the breaking ball. They were, they were pretty good. So I just feel comfortable out there trying to make good pitches and, and to get the results. Felix, first of all, congratulations on getting your deal done. Huh? Thank you. Um, yeah, I know everybody's excited that you're going to be in Seattle for a long time. Me too. I, I, I think it, it's been interesting for me. I've been down here for a little bit now and, and getting a chance to, to watch this team. It looks like a much different lineup that you're going to have behind you this year to help you get some run support. Oh, yes, for sure, man. We got guys that they can hit the ball pretty good. They, they can hit out of the ballpark. I mean, with the addition of Raul, Bay, Morales, and all those guys, I mean, we're going to be way better this year. Felix, did you have a checklist of what you wanted to work on this spring? You've been around for a long time already, eight years in the major leagues, but what did you want to work on in particular this spring? Well, I just try to be consistent every time. Just every time I go out there, I try to make good pitches and, and just work on all my pitches, so. That's, uh, that's what I do every time. What about some of your expectations for your club this year as you guys get ready to start here in about a week? Yeah, it's a big expectation for us. I mean, we got, like, a, like you say, we got pretty good lineup and we might surprise a lot of people. So just make sure we see us. You saw what was happening during the offseason and now you actually see, are seeing it happen here with the addition of Kendrys Morales. And Michael Morris is back. These guys are going to hit their share of home runs, especially with the fences coming in. Raul Ibanez. I mean, that is a legitimate middle part of the order for you guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not not like that. Just I mean, it's it's a big time, you know, lineup. Like, and the clubhouse is different right now. We just got goodbye. And we're always together. We always have fun. So it's, it's a lot different than the last couple of years. 
It's also been a different spring training because of those guys that Rick just mentioned, Felix. So there's not a lot of things that you guys have to work out here in spring training. There's only a couple of jobs open where last year and the year before, you know, there was a lot of things that Jack Zarenzik and Eric Wedge were trying to figure out. So that must feel good to you, especially a veteran guy, knowing that most of this stuff is already settled. Yes, yeah, for sure, man. It's a lot of competition right now. They deny this idea, but it's, it's, um, it's a good feeling for us. And it's, uh, like I said, it's big expectation, and we're just trying to, we're just trying to surprise people. So. Felix, most guys, when they when they throw a changeup, they back it up about 10 miles an hour from their fastball. You don't do that, but your changeup is as good as anybody Thank in you. the American League. Why is that so effective for you? And, and where did you learn that? I, I don't know. I'm not. I mean, since 2009, I'm throwing more changes than than anybody else. Like, I mean, I'm trying to feel comfortable with the, with that pitch. But what it make better the change is my fastball. You know, when I got command of my fastball, the change is way better. You know, I'm on light going to home play. It's, it's, a, it's a lot different. How, 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 as, you, as you've moved on in your career, and, and Rick and I have both been fortunate to see you when you first showed up here as a young man, a solid base hit back up the middle. But your changeup to me watching it, it it's, it's really interesting because it's only three or four miles an hour off of your fastball as far as the speed of it goes, but you get tremendous movement. And it seems like even if hitters are looking for it, they're going to have a tough. There you go. Cool them off a little bit. That looks good. Yeah, there's Franklin again. <laughs> but can you talk about that a little bit? Just this, the, because you don't have that that 10 mile an hour separation with it. Well, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's different than than all the changes. It's, I just grab it the same. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. But it's moving a lot. It's moving sometimes moving like a sinker. Sometimes it's dropped like a split. And, right. Mm -hmm. And people's can't recognize it's like they always ask me if I throw split or something. No, it's a change up. And uh, I mean, it's, like I said, I don't know where it's coming from. So. Well, I'll tell you what's a great pitch for you. And, and, and by the way, the other four pitches are pretty great, too. <laughs> those, <laughs> those guys are messing with you, man. You're on the air right now, and your buddy Franklin Gutierrez is throwing sunflower seeds at you, and they got the towel on you. I mean, they love you, don't they? And I love those guys, too, man. I love my teammates. <laughs> Felix, uh, you were, oh my, oh no, Montero is down on that swing and a miss by Lindor. And trainer Rick Griffin going out to check up on Jesus Montero right now, lying on his side. Jesus. Oh man. Couldn't tell, Rick, if it hit him in the mask or hopefully it didn't get him in the throat. Take a look at it. Oh, oh the, the bat. bat. Hit him with the bat. Oh, the man. oh no. On the side of the head. Oh my goodness. Hopefully it'll be okay. So uh, Griffin taking his time, asking him all the questions. You know where you are. Wow. You know what just happened. Eric Wedge standing over the top of uh, Jesus Montero. Everybody looking on with a whole lot of concern because Felix, you've worked with him last year when he came over from the Yankees, and of course this spring, this young man is making some big strides behind the plate. Tell us about Jesus. Oh man, he's way better than last year. I mean, he's he's he got it more uh, like he can call more games, and he's just he's moving a lot better, and he's doing what he's doing back there. So, I mean, he's making a lot of improvement. And by the way, his bat is pretty good. Yes, yes. It is. yeah, he can hit. Yeah, <laughs> and he he has what. You know, he's one of those young guys, like my partner over here to my right, Mike Blowers, who started off knowing how to drive the ball the other way, using the opposite field, and that's what Jesus did when he came up here. Yeah, man, I don't know how to do that, but I was like me. You know, I just trying to heal. I was trying to hit the other way too. Well, I mean, the grand slam he hit off of uh, Johan Santana oh, was an opposite field home run in yep. Shea Stadium. In the double last year, man, yeah, I just trying to go the other way. That's me. That's a good hitting approach for you, guys. I just did. I know. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it looks like Jesus hopefully is okay right now. They have Montero sitting up. Matt Toth, the other Mariner trainer, has come out. Now one of the team physicians coming out to check up. And and, and I tell you what, baseball and football, they're not messing around at all with concussions. Nor anymore. should they. Uh, he's very no. fortunate that he had that helmet on. That's what saved him. He still took a good shot from it. But it's good to see him up on his feet right now. That's that's a scary sight. And you can see the lump that he has on the side of his head right now. Oh. So he took a pretty good shot right there. And they're going to take him in, I'm sure, yeah. and, and, and reevaluate him. But hopefully he's going to be okay. Yeah, he's got to get out of the ball game, get looked at, and uh, we're going to have a new 
catcher for Jesus Montero. So um, man hopefully he's all right. Um, Jesus uh, Montero hit by the bat. Felix. Yes sir. Let's talk a little bit more about this uh, ball club. I can't believe you're 26 years old. This is your ninth year. Coming He's the up veteran in the major leagues. You're the veteran. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, well, huh, I don't know if you call veteran. Well, I'm still no, no, young. No, I'm still young. Yeah, yeah. Young man, you're but the, a veteran yeah, on this yeah, club. Yeah, yes, for sure. Yeah. I want you to talk about one of the young guys on this who has a chance of making this pitching staff, and that's Brandon Mauer. This kid has been unbelievable. What do you see in this young man, only 22 years of age? What I see, man, with this guy is like. Uh, He's aggressive. He got pretty good stuff, and he got pretty good chance. I mean, I would love to see him in the big leagues. And like I say, he's aggressive. He got pretty good command. He's know what he's doing, and so that's what I like about this guy. Man, he's been he's been outstanding, and uh, there's a lot of competition for that four and five spots with Roswell Ramirez and also Blake Bevin, who's starting today, and Jeremy Bonderman trying to come back from the uh, Tommy John surgery. Like I said, man. Like I said, it's a lot of competition. It's I mean, we got a lot of talent over here, and uh, that's that's pretty good for us. That's, that's good for. It's a hard decision, but it's, it's good decisions, you know. Mm -hmm. It's good to have some depth, isn't it? Yes. I mean, one sure. way or the other, guys aren't always going to stay healthy, and it's nice to have some people that you have confidence in to back them up. Oh yeah, for sure, man. It's, 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 you know, I make you feel better. I steam. Felix, tell me a little bit about your buddy Franklin Gutierrez. The key for Franklin, if he's healthy, he is one of the best center fielders in all uh, baseball, and he's having a great spring. Tell me a little bit about Franklin this spring. Well, for me, he's the best center field in the league. So, I'm just, I mean, like I said, Franklin is the key for this team, too. Where every time he's, he's in center field, he makes a lot of difference. And he's doing good. And hopefully, be healthy for the whole year. And along that line, talking about him, but it, really the whole club last year played great defense behind you guys the entire season. When you go out there, Felix, you're not always going to have your best stuff. And when you go out there, sometimes you just decide you're going to pitch to your defense if you don't have your good fastball or your breaking ball isn't quite there for you. Well, as a pitch, it make you feel good. You know, we got pretty good defense. Like, you know, you got pretty good shortstop, third base, second base. I'm a ground ball pitcher, so it make you feel good. You know, okay, I don't got my stuff today. I just got to go with my sinkers or get ground balls. And, and uh, I mean, we, we got... Unbelievable different. The highlight for you, Felix, last year had to be August the 15th yep. at home. Uh, all those yellow King Felix t shirts and lined in the right field, a base hit by Lindor, and now the Indians have two on. But August the 15th last year, Mariners and the Tampa Bay Rays, and you throw a perfect game, the first in Mariners history, only the 23rd in Major League history. Tell me a little bit about what you were thinking. After the seventh inning, ah, that's a good question. Well, <laughs> uh, I was not thinking about nothing. I know, I know, I knew I had a perfect game going on. But like I was not thinking. I was like, every time I jump with the mile, I was like, it's nobody around me. I just got to make good pitches. But like in the ninth inning, I was a little nervous. I mean, when I just walked to the stairs, going to the mile, and I see, my, I see me in the in the screen. I was like, you got to do it for sure. You got to do this and. I mean, it was it was great. It was great for me. It was great for the team. It was great for the Seattle. I thought it was pretty cool too. I know that you, you pay attention to the Kings Court and all those people supporting you out there. That was pretty neat to have that happen there at home like that. Yeah, man. I mean, for the fans, they need that, man. It's, it was awesome. You know what was awesome too? It was the next star after the perfect game. That was cool. Oh, that was unbelievable. I'm not, I'm not gonna forget about that. It was it was crazy. It was, it was awesome. Everybody showed up in the yellow T-shirts. Yep, man. Supreme Court game. Wow, that was, <laughs> that was unbelievable, man. When I see all those people, I was like, really? Yeah. This is crazy. They love you, buddy. Yeah, man. Oh. Yeah, it was awesome. And we're gonna we're gonna air that game on Monday night for Mariner Monday. I'll be watching it. All right. Hey, uh, I gotta ask you. Yeah. Where'd you get those sunglasses? Those are cool. Oh, you like it? I love them. You want you want you want to? Want I'd, I'd love a okay, pair. Okay. Oh. Somebody you, bought you want one of this? No, it's the Nike. Nike's give it to me. Yeah. I, I love those sunglasses. You look cool, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. No, no. I see styling, Mike. Oh, always. But he styles on the mound. You know when he pitches. And you know I'm trying to look good. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you always look good. Thank Ma you. Mariners have a new catcher, minor league kid taking over. Michael Dowd is the uh, new catcher. Tell me a little bit about uh, Kelly Shopik, uh, Felix, a veteran guy. Ground ball right side. Seeger over to second one, and that's all they're going to get. So one out for the Indians here in the bottom half of the second. But he's a veteran guy. 
knows how to handle the pitching staff. I think he's a nice compliment for Jesus Montero. Yes, for sure, man. He catched me yesterday, and he looked pretty good. He's going to help the young guys like Montero. And um, like I said, it's always, it's always good to have a veteran in, uh, in the team. I want to go back to the perfect game. All right, you told us a little bit about what you were thinking after the seventh inning. What was it like to finally get that strike past Sean Rodriguez for the final out of the game? I was like, you did it. <laughs> you did it. You did it. Oh, man, that was, a, that was something special. That was something special. And I got Brandon in the back. Like, you did it, buddy. You did it. It was crazy, man. You know, can I do this about? Can I do this? Um, you know, it's my teammates always support me, and then it was great. And it was just a, an amazing feeling to the ballpark, and nobody left. Everybody just stood there and, and cheered. Yep. For yeah. A long, long time because, my goodness, it <laughs> doesn't happen yeah. very often. Yeah, I don't think anybody sat down for the last two innings. That's what, what I see. Nobody sat down for the last two innings. And I, and I like what you said. Line drive, diving, catch it, shortstop by Andino. What a play. And that's out number two. Naquin lines out, Tyler Naquin. Wow. Outstanding. So two on and two outs for the Indians here in the top half of the second. Felix, uh, your thoughts about what this team can accomplish here in 2013? Like I said before, man, uh, uh, we're going to surprise a lot of people. So be careful with the Seattle Mariners. So. I like that. I do too, and I agree with them. I, I think those, the way they're swinging the bats, and when you have Felix at the top of your rotation and the bullpen that they have, I, th I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. And I think the people are going to find out quickly, though, Felix. It's not going to be a secret for long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's true, man. We got, like I said, we got a talent over here. We got great guys, great guys in this clubhouse. So we good. Now, here it is, March the 23rd. Are you just chomping at the bit for April the 1st right now after your performance last night? Well, what about? Are you just chomping at the bit to get this season started right now on April the first after what you did last night? Yeah, man, I feel pretty good. I mean, I feel I feel strong. And every time I go there, I feel stronger. I got one more, and I just I'm just gonna go to opening day. So that's what I want. Well, that's interesting, Philly. So when you you have one more outing before you get to opening day, how will you approach that? Will you will you back off a little bit, or what no. are they going to do? No. No, no, not at all. Just gotta go out there and do do what I do. So I don't think I gotta back up. I just gotta do my job. All right. Well, we're looking forward to that start, and especially on April the first. Chopper to short, and Dino's got it, and Blake Bevan we got it. It's out of a jam here in the top half of the second, and hopefully Jesus Montero is okay. Felix Hernandez, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Great sunglasses. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks, thanks Felix. Felix. Super right. job by Felix last night. We go to the bottom of the second here in Peoria. Mariners two, and the Indians nothing. Only. Join us for Mariners opening night on Monday, April the 8th, and you'll be witness to one of the greatest events of the year. See the fireworks and fanfare, the pageantry, and the players all in one unforgettable evening at Safeco Field. Great seats are still available for opening night at Mariners.com.
April the 8th against the newest member of the American League, the Houston Astros. Nice crowd up there in the berm on the outfield grass, the berm behind the outfield fence here in Peoria. 2 nothing Mariners leading the Indians. Kelly Shopik, the DH today, leading it off, takes a look at ball one. It's nice to get a chance to speak to Felix and, yeah. and do that, and I think he's right. Line drive, center field. That's going to drop well in front of Tyler Naquin, so Kelly Shopik gets a board here in the second. I, I've always said, Rick, that with, with Felix, it's he's a great pitcher. There's no question about that as we take a look at this swing by Shopik, who's having a good spring. He'll be the backup catcher this year. But what, what I'm the most impressed with him is when things aren't going particularly well and the way that guy competes and finds a way to get through it. It's it's really phenomenal and it's one of the things that make him great. There's a lot of things but I, I think it's easy to see yeah. that he has the good fastball and the great changeup and all that stuff but he doesn't have it all the time and to watch that guy go about his business has just been a lot of fun and I'm just thrilled that he, they were able to get that deal done for him and he's going to be around for a long time. And he was too. I mean it was his idea. He had two years left on his contract and he told his agents get this thing done and they got the seven year contract contract and Mike you know talking about the way that he handles things now in the mound that's something that he had to learn as as a young pitcher oh yeah first well, few years. well he was 18 years old yeah. and you know I don't think many of us at 18 would have been able to handle the situation no. that he was in the talent that he has but um, I, he's just a lot of fun to watch and I, I'm excited for him and, and hopefully these guys are going to be better it looks like they're going to it had a great spring as this ground ball goes out to second Brad Miller broken back ground ball. They're going to get an out of force on Shopik at second base. So Brad Miller is safe at first base on a 4 6 fielder's choice. And, and I think he's right. I think he's, he's going to get better run support, and it'll be a lot of fun to see what kind of numbers he can put up with that. So, you know, it's, it's going to be neat. One more outing for him. He'll pitch, I believe, on Wednesday before he gets the opener. Um, then he'll be ready to go. He'll get a second start also on that first road trip in Chicago. And then I believe. His first start at home, which will be his third start early in the season, I think is on April the 11th. Now hopefully he'll get that started in Chicago. <laughs> Never can tell with the weather. Yeah. Michael Saunders takes a breaking ball from Kazmir outside for ball one. Michael hit the ball hard his first time up again. Eric Wedge, we've seen Franklin Gutierrez lead off. Ackley was leading off, and now we're getting a chance to look at Michael Saunders in the leadoff spot. So I think that's something that He's going to experiment a little bit with at the start of the season. Michael hit the ball hard the first time up. Sure did. Got things going with that base into the right field. And Dino followed with a single to right. Ibanez a single to right. Smoke a double down the line. And Mike, how happy is new hitting coach Dave Hansen right now after watching what he's seen over the last month? Yeah, he feels pretty good about things, doesn't he? Two and one on Saunders. And he had a lot on his plate. I mean, as the new hitting coach during the course of the offseason, he had to sit down and take a look at all that video of every guy. He said, okay, what's his swing look like? And then he came to spring training and they had to get to know all their different personalities and, and how to approach them and the things that they want to work on. I mean, there's, there's a lot of work to be done when you're just hired as a new hitting coach. But it's something that he's done in the past. And he was a pretty good hitter in his own right. And he has a real understanding of you know all the struggles that you go through at this level on a daily right. basis and I think he'll, he'll be really good for the guys and so far spring training has gone great for him but I think during the season you know think it's it's a long year and guys go through their struggles all all hitters do and I, I think he'll be a, a good person to have that, that be able to go talk to him and, and get him straightened out and in a short time you know besides talking about the X's and O's of, of hitting because I mean you could talk hitting the mechanics yeah all night long mechanics runner goes throw it out to second and out at second base is Brad Miller trying to steal so two outs for the Mariners here in the bottom half of the second good throw by Lou Marson two outs it's also I think for a hitting coach Mike and you know this better than anybody you know gaining the trust of you know 13 14 guys on that Ball club. Well, I think I think it, there's a lot of that that goes into it, Rick, and, and a lot of times, a solid base hit for Saunders, and Michael Saunders is now two for two. We're only in the bottom half of the second. Looks like this pitch is down in the zone, and Michael stays with it, drops the barrel to it, and drives it right back up the middle. Didn't try to pull that ball. 
So he'll pick up another base hit, his second hit of the game. But I, I think on the hitting coach's side of things, Rick, so many of these guys, mechanically, there are a few adjustments here and there, but it's it's more the psychological part of it and how to deal with each individual. In there. And everybody's different and, and how to get in their head and, and make them feel good about themselves and keep their confidence up, especially when things aren't going well. I think that's the most important thing. And, and to do that, it goes back to what you were saying, and that is the guys have to have confidence in the person they're talking to knows what they're talking about. Yeah. And I know for myself, I, I said it all the time, Lee Elia was the hitting coach in Seattle when I was there playing, and I thought that was one of the biggest strengths of Lee. He would go down, look at the video you. with you, and, and work off the tee, and to do all the soft toss drills and all those things, and talk about a few things, but it was just the conversation that was going on while you were working on those things was the biggest difference, I think. And Lee was, was great at it, and I think Dave will be too. It's got to be tough, but how tough is it to stay consistent with a swing during a 162 game season? I mean, you get hot, you get cold, you get hot again, and it's a roller coaster, right? For for most of us, that is the case. There's a few that, you know, when you get into that good part of it, things are going well, they can hang on to it longer, and they're typically the stars of the game. You know, for me, I always marveled at Edgar, and nobody worked hard at it, but Edgar, once he was able to start squaring it up, he stayed there. And Dino sends a ground ball to the second baseman Ramirez and that will retire the side. No runs, a couple of base hits. Mariners already have six hits this afternoon and after two innings of play, Mariners two, Indians nothing. to you by Sterling Bank. Nobody works harder for you. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. And by the Emerald Queen Casino. Welcoming showbiz icon, singer, and comedian Jerry Lewis, April 13th. For tickets, go to theemeraldqueen.com. Take a look at that. It is the wave in Coyote Buttes, the area of northern Arizona that's just near the border of Utah. The hiking is about three miles, but Mike and Dave, it's a little bit, uh, or Rick and Mike, it's a little bit exclusive. Only 20 hikers allowed in a day. So if you guys are planning a trip, I would suggest putting your name on the waiting list. Jen, we're on our way. Mike and I are ready to go. Well, after the ball game, of course, but my goodness, that looks beautiful. It, the wave. It does. And think about it. With all the walking you've been doing lately, you could actually make it those three miles. I might. No, you will. You've been working hard this spring. Yeah, I'm down 12 pounds. How about that? That's great, bud. Good job. Top of the third. I needed it. Mariners lead the Indians by a score of three to nothing. Mike Avilas. They'll lay things off for the tribe. Blake Bevan has worked out of two jams, Mike. Already in this game, so he's gotten some big outs when he's needed them. Line try, base hit left center field. So Mike Avilas, leadoff single here in the third. I'm talking with Eric Wedge a number of times this spring, Mike. You know, he's evaluating everybody because he wants to break camp and go north with the 25 best that he has. And he says, you really find out a lot more about a guy when there's some adverse adversity. How does he handle it? How does he get out of it? And 
situations like this, you get a chance to find out about Blake Bevin. Well, I would agree, and I, and I think what we've seen so far today is when Blake has been in a little bit of trouble, he's been able to get the ground ball when he's needed it, right? And, and that's a big thing. I think if you can sink the ball and keep the ball on the ground, you have a chance to help yourself. And, and like we were talking to Felix, the defense is so good on this club. And this one is gone way out of here to right field. Goodbye baseball off the bat of Cord Phelps. A two run shot his third of the spring for Cleveland. And the Indians have just tied up this game at two to two. No doubt about it. Well I, I think on that one that looked like an off speed pitch. And it was right in that happy area for most left handed hitters. It'll be down and in. And typically lefty like it there and you can see the catcher set up on the outside part of the plate. This will just get back on the inner half right in that loop zone. And Phelps doesn't miss it as he catches it out in front of the plate. That's well back over the bullpen out there. So a mistake by Blake trying to get a strike but it wasn't a quality strike that time. It cost him. So the game all tied at two and here's designated hitter Jason Giambi and he takes low and inside. Football one. Travis Hafner for years was the uh, DH for the Indians Mike and then he had a share of injuries and now he's with the, the New York Yankees So that opened up a spot for a GMB after he found out it you know things weren't going to go. Oh. Well hit right center field Saunders going back looking up and this one is gone goodbye baseball Jason Giambi with his third home run of the spring back to backers by Phelps and Giambi and now the Indians lead three to two. And Rick, that looked like the pitch. That was a fastball, but it looked like it was in the same area that we were just talking about with left-handed hitters. Pitch right around the knees on the inner half of the plate again. Set up away. We'll see where this pitch is in. Then he misses his spot. You can see the catcher reaching back for it. And Giami, who's done that a lot in his career, doesn't miss it. 429 times during the regular season, Jason Giambi. With a home run. Here's right fielder Matt Carson. Strike on the outside corner, 0 and 1. Two hopper to third, up of the ball, Brad Miller toss across in time to get Carson. So there's one out for the Indians. Well, friends, now's your chance to ask the booth anything you want. Tweet your questions to at root sports underscore. And W, and we'll answer some of them later on in the game. Ask the booth. Three, two Indians, one out, and here's catcher Lou Marsan. We didn't have anything like that when I watched the Chicago Cubs on TV back in the 60s. Didn't have Twitter back then. Oh, and a lot of things stuff. back then, Ricky. Yeah. Back then, TVs had tubes in them, Mike. Tubes. Didn't you, you did have a sand lot, though. Thank goodness. Yeah. Best thing that ever happened to me. Sand lot in the, behind my house. 2 0 the count on Marsan. Oh, you had a little league field behind your house. Yeah, well, I was fortunate. It was right in the backyard. We need to build more little league fields for kids all around. Ground ball right side, right to Kyle Seager at second base. Marsan is out 4 3, and the Indians have two outs here in the top of the third. I'm always amazed, even after playing and, and watching the games and, and, and doing what I've been able to do, fortunate to do it, but major league hitters, it, it doesn't take much. You make a couple of mistakes. I think Blake has pitched pretty well today, but he's made a couple of mistakes and he had to pay a price for it. They don't miss it very no. often, do they? Well, you know what that's like when you get your pitch. Yeah. And uh, sometimes in one at bat, you're only going to get one pitch to hit. Here's Francisco Lindor, one of the top draft picks recently by the Indians. He had a base hit, a single in the second. I think that goes back to an approach looking for that pitch, right? Well, it, I think it's that, and I just think it's, it's trusting your hands a lot of times. Sometimes, especially pitches that are in, like those two that Blake gave up the hits on the home runs. Good play by Smoke. Tricky hop, snared by Smoke at first, takes it to the bank for the out on Lindor, and that will end the inning. A couple of home runs for the Tribe. They lead it by a run. We go to the bottom of the third. Indians three, and the Mariners two.
for the best in life. Say, friends, buy early and save. There are more value options than ever before for all Mariner games at Safe Gold Field this season. To secure the best ticket prices, make plans to buy early and save when you get tickets at the Safe Gold Field box office, any Mariners team store, or Mariners.com. Fans enjoying the sunshine and baseball up there in the berm behind the outfield wall here with the Peoria Sports Complex. As we go to the bottom of the third this afternoon, the Indians now lead. By a score of three to two after the back to back home runs by Cord Phelps and Jason Giambi. Raul Ibanez will lead things off against Scott Casimir. Trying to make a comeback with the Indians. Ibanez, Smoke, and Seeger here in the third. Breaking ball is up and away. Ball one. Hope to see everybody out at Safeco Field for that home opener on Monday, April the 8th against the Houston Astros. Fences will be coming in, and Mike, we got a sneak preview of what the uh, fences will look like out there at Safe Go Field. Bob Christofferson and everybody working hard to get the field ready. It looks great, doesn't it? Sure does. Yeah. The new scoreboard as well popped up. Shallow left center field over Carrera and Naquin. It is going to be Carrera who makes the catch and one out for the Mariners here in the. Yeah, third. I'm excited to see that. Uh, like most of the fans are too. I mean, that's, it's it's huge to begin with, and I, from what I understand, the picture. It's going to be about as clear as you can get it. Yeah, that high depth yeah, so that'll, resolution. That'll, that'll be neat to see that when we get home. And that thing is just, I, I believe I was told this morning, a little bit smaller, not by much, than the one at uh, the Dallas Cowboys yeah. Stadium. Yeah. That's big. That's big. Justin Spoke with a drive into the gap in right center field. Nate went on the run. This one is going to be on the track and off the wall. Spoke. In at second base, the throw not in time. Gets in with a slide, and for Justin, two at bats, two doubles. It's just really swung the bat well all spring long. I'm sure that he has a lot of confidence going right now. His first time at his double was down the left field line. And this one here, he goes to right center field on a pitch that's away from him. So a good swing by Justin again. Again, he also has four home runs and a couple of doubles today. So he's really swung the bat well. Look at that Justin's swing this year, Mike. There's not a whole lot of wasted motion. No, it's shorter. It's more compact. He, last year, he, at times, he would he would wrap the bat a little bit too much, so he had to, it took him longer to get it into the hitting area. And that's something that he has worked on to shorten it up, and it has paid dividends in the spring. Kyle Seeger with a swing and a foul back and out of play. Kyle 0 for 1, fanned in the first. One home run and five runs batted in as you take a look at Justin Smoke out there at second, the tying run of the ball game. Foul back, and it's 0 2 on Seeger. And it went into the press box. Ryan Divish got to it from the Tacoma News Tribune. Way to go, Ryan. Gave it to a fan. Nice catch.
hats the Indians are wearing here at spring training they look like the old time Cleveland hats with that block C. In the dirt for ball one, one ball and two strikes. Terry Francona, there's a look at uh, Bevan and Casimir, Mike. Yeah, our Century Link high speed pitch. Casimir topping out at 93, Bevan at 91. And it's kind of a homecoming for Terry Francona because, as we mentioned earlier, his dad played for the Indians way back when. Ground ball to the right side and right to the second baseman, Ramirez. Seager out at first base, so two outs in the inning on the play. Smoke will get to third. And that'll bring up uh, Michael Dowd, the minor league catcher who was pressed into duty when Jesus Montero was hit on the side of the head by a bat on the follow through. And here's a look what happened to Jesus. I thought originally it was a foul ball, but it was the swing. You can see the follow through, and he hits him on top of the head. And he was wearing a helmet, which is the good news, but he took quite a shot as you take another look at it, and the follow through is what gets him. That was nasty. Dowd swings and pops one up out of play in the first base side. 0 and 1 on Dowd. What was it? Probably, I guess, 30 years ago, maybe when the guy started wearing the helmet. I remember Johnny Bench, he always. He, he's the one that started doing it, yeah. but a lot of the catchers, Rick Dempsey and those guys, would just wear a baseball hat. I got here in 1983, and, and Dempsey, I think, was one of the last guys not to wear a helmet. It was just the cap out of play down the right field side by Dowd. Yeah, but back in the day, they didn't have that protection. No. Just the cap, which wasn't much. Which wasn't much, if any at all. And now all the guys wear some sort of helmet back there. They have different styles that they wear, but. That's, that's a good thing, and yeah. along with the ear flap, and now the the base coaches have to wear helmets also, which is a good thing. Yeah. Three, two Indians, and a swing and a miss by Dowd in the dirt, knocking it down the catcher Marsan. The throw to first, a strikeout for Casimir. The put out two, three, and that will end the inning. We go to the top half of the fourth here in Peoria. It's the Indians three and the Mariners two. is brought to you by the ski do summit the most specialized mountain sled ever by bnsf the engine that connects us and by ford we are local and our tour around arizona continues this is lee's ferry the launching point for all grand canyon rafting trips there on the colorado river it looks sunny it looks gorgeous it looks like another place rick and mike should put on their destination location this spring well, Jen, we have to go visit uh, the Wave first, and then we're going to go to Lee's Ferry there, Mike. We're going to be busy. So like you're going to have a lot of paddling to do. The water was pretty calm out there. Oh, man. Beautiful sight there on the Colorado River. 
Second baseman Joe Jose Ramirez will lead things off. Curtis was telling me about 100 yards down from there is where the white water is. Rick, that's when you can really. No, go. that's when I'm, I'm not good. You're not going that. down 100 yards? No, no. No, no I'm on the beach, man. Y'all <laughs> take care now? I'll see you somewhere else, but uh, no, no. How about you? You know the white water? No. Nope. No. Nope. Yeah. Big curve. Strike two on Ramirez on to the count. Cleveland on top three to two after the back to back home runs by Phelps and Giambi in the third. Mariners got their two runs in the bottom of the first inning. This will be the 47th pitch for Blake. That's with a curveball. And I don't think he liked it as soon as he let it go, Mike. No, he, he, he certainly didn't. Typical of Blake, though, he's throwing a lot of strikes again. Last year, only 24 walks and 152 innings pop up right behind home plate. Can't see Dowd it. can't find it. Here comes Miller, and it's going to drop safely to the right of Michael Dow. The uh, catcher came in to replace Jesus Montero. Mike, you got to look up into that sky. Just can't find it. That's tough. It's. Sometimes guys will wear sunglasses even underneath their mask, but in this sky, it's difficult. The sun is right there. In fact, even home plate umpire Dan Bellino, it almost came down and hit him on top yeah. of the head. He, he couldn't find it either. Miller was trying to help out coming in. I think we're getting good news about uh, Jesus Montero. Line drive into right center field. Jose Ramirez with a leadoff single for the Indians. Here in the top half of the fourth inning, the news from the clubhouse, no concussion. Great news. Oh, going to have a little bit of a headache for a few days, but yeah. that's that's better than a concussion, so that's great news. If you missed it in the top half of the second, there was a swing and a miss by one of the Indians hitters, and then the follow through, the barrel of the bat hit Jesus on the side of the helmet. Probably have a sore neck also for a few days. Mm -hmm. This is Tyler Naquin. Looks having a tough time getting that first hitter out in this game. Ricky's letting the leadoff hitter get on by the base hit all four innings now. Puts a little pressure on you. Owen won the count on Naquin. Naquin hit the ball hard his last time up, but it was a fine diving play by Andino at shortstop to catch the line drive. During the course of the year, Eric Wedge will have a chance to give guys a day off and as a toss the first base and get Andino in there some at bats and he's going to play good defense. Yeah, and it gets him, especially when I think about the infield, he can, he's playing shortstop today, which he certainly can do. But with Seeker and Ackley, a couple left handed hitters, he'll be able to get Andino, a right handed hitter, in there against some, some tough left handers at, at times to give them a little bit of a break, yeah. take some of the pressure off of them. So I think he's going to be a good addition to this club. And Seeger off to his right, little flip to Andino for one on to first for two. They get Ramirez at second, Nick went out at first base on a 4 6 3 double play, two outs for the tribe here in the top half of the fourth. And these are our keys to spring training presented by Ford. Mike, look at that 18 wins already this spring. Yeah, play. I think are probably with the way that they've been playing, they're going to at least tie the 94 team with 21. 20 in 1999, already 18 this year. They lost the first game of the spring here in Peoria to San Diego, and then they ripped off 10 consecutive wins. Well, I've been down here for a week now, Rick, and they, they've really played well the entire time. You don't, yeah. you don't see any sloppy baseball from them at all. And sometimes you get to this point in spring, that'll happen. Guys get anxious for the season to start and maybe aren't concentrating quite as much, but we haven't seen any let up from them at all down here in spring training. It's a good sign. And a credit to the coaching staff to stay right. after these guys and keep on them to keep pushing hard till the opener on April 1st. So, in a different situation this spring as well, Mike Carrera sends a pop up out of play in the third base side because with the World Baseball Classic this year being played, everything was moved up a week. So there were built in off days, three off days during the course of uh, the month of March. And Eric and 
Carl Willis had to plot out, you know, how to take care of these guys for the extra time down here during the spring. Yeah, you're going to forget the route home by the time you get back here. You've been <laughs> down here for a long time. When did you get down here? February, February 17th. Yeah. Now, so the guys have been here for a long time. Yeah. Clubhouse guys have been down here forever to set things up. You know, Pete Fortune and right. Chris DeWitt and Billy and Ted and Brian Stiles. Yeah, and I, I guarantee you at this point, especially the veteran guys, there's some younger guys that are still trying to make the club, and there's competition for some spots on this team. But the veteran guys, everyone you talk to, they're they're ready to get it started. So it's been a long time, but they're getting closer to it, a week away from from leaving here. Cabrera checks his swing at a breaking ball down and in, did not go. Ball two, two balls and two strikes. I want to give a shout out to a guy that's been around this baseball scene. As long as anybody in Seattle history, Henry Ginzel. Yes. He's retiring. Uh, this is his final spring here in 2013. He's been associated with the Mariners since day one of the franchise. And then for many years, long before the Mariners got here, here and his father, Freddie, worked for the Seattle Rainiers in the Old Pacific Coast League. I mean, we're talking many decades. A professional baseball for Henry Genzel. Yeah, Henry Henry ran the clubhouse when I was a Mariner back in the day that I was playing, and eventually went over to the visitors side. But um, man, yeah, he's he's been a part of this organization for a long, long time. So congratulations to him. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, Mike Henry saw the history of this franchise from the inside out, working inside that clubhouse with all you guys. Ground ball right side over Seager to his left at the cut of the grass, and he gets Carrera that. We'll retire the side. One, two, three inning. Despite the leadoff single by Ramirez, we head to the bottom of the fourth. Indians lead three to two. Indians leading the Mariners 3 2 as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Say, friends, we want you to join the conversation. For up to date game information and live interaction, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Check us out and stay connected with Root Sports. Rick Riz, along with my buddy Mike Blowers, on a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Peoria. Great spot to watch a game, and the berm is packed with uh, the fans. Center fielder Casper Wells will lead things off. Followed by Kelly Shopik and then Brad Miller. Wells was off and running this spring first. Six or seven ball games had those 12 RBIs and came down with a stiff neck. And and he had to take some time off and since then he's had a difficult time getting his swing back. He's been a little inconsistent with it. So he's still searching but that's what spring training is yeah. for. You got time to. Get it together. And I think for for Casper when he gets into some trouble, it, it typically is is a timing for him. It's his timing mechanism. He ends up getting in between where he's behind the fastball and usually out in front like he was on that breaking ball right there. A lot of hitters fight with that. Sometimes you just have to be committed to one pitch or the other, and then you know hopefully you can get a few fastballs to hit and just start from there again. 
a little bit late on that fastball. So for Casper, something we saw last year. Once he gets it, he can get as hot as anybody. We've, mm -hmm. we've seen him do that too. But sometimes you a little bit late getting that front foot down, and it causes problems. In the dirt ball, two, two balls and two strikes, and really not too much works until you get that foot down, right? Yeah, but your hands won't start working for you until you do that. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's it's a timing it's a timing deal, and a lot of guys have different things to help them with their timing. Strike three called. Casper caught looking, and that is strikeout number four for Scott Casper. One away for the Mariners here at the bottom of the fourth. Well, friends, enjoy the flexibility and experience the fun of Mariners baseball with a six-game flex pack. Choose the six games you want to see this season, including opening night. Plans start as low as forty-eight dollars. So pick out a pack that's perfect for you. Available for a limited time only at Mariners.com slash flex. Mariners open up April the 1st in Oakland. Then it's on to Chicago. Big curveball strike on Kelly Shop at going one. And then the home opener Monday, April the 8th. At Safeco Field against the Houston Astros. Talking about that timing mechanism, it's different for hitters. Some of them will do it with their hands, where they'll just push their hands back a little bit. Some guys will do it with their knee. Kelly Shopik, for example, you can see him get that front foot down early, get it started with it. He sends one way back to center field. This is off the top of the batter's eye. Bounces back over to Naquin. Holy smokes, what a shot by Kelly Shopik. You can't hit a ball any farther without it going out of the ballpark. Off the top of the batter's eye for a long double. And it looked like Nick, when the center fielder thought this was going to be a home run, the way he caught it and turned around, I think he thought that where it hit up on the wall above that line you can see out there, but it'll be a double for him as he catches it. I think what a what a shot it was, though, by Shopping. He really put a charge into it. You don't see many guys hit it over that wall. No, he almost did. When are we going to paint a yellow stripe right above the patty? That's long enough for a home run, isn't it? Yeah, I would say so. Or even if it's on that blue line that you yeah. kind of see there, it looks like right it. There. Yeah. Get some yellow paint out. Game would be tight. You charge into one like that, you certainly have to get credit for it, wouldn't you? Absolutely. But I, I think on the timing, it's something that these guys work on all the time down here. And we were just seeing Kelly Shopik a slightly open stance, so he would get that foot back in there to square him up early. And that's why his hands were yeah. able to work from if, if you're late with that, then your hands won't fire. And, and you're going to have some problems, but everybody's a little bit different on how they do it. And then there's guys that don't have a stride at all. Right. You know, Paul Molitor didn't have a stride. Two and one, the count on Brad Miller, very talented kid. He went to Clemson University. Big year last year at A ball and at double A ball. And he's been impressive in spring training. Still yeah. here in camp. Hanging around. Yeah. On a play in the third base side. Two and two on Miller. And it's always kind of weird when you day by day, week after week, you walk into that clubhouse and all of a sudden guys are missing and lockers are gone or lockers are cleaned up. And you know it's time to break for the new season. Yeah. I guess it's they're playing the ends. We can reference Major League when the guys come in. They, they don't really put a red, they don't really put a red card in your locker. Right? Like the movie, yeah, yeah. Typically, it's a tap on the shoulder and you turn around. It's one of the coaches asking you to go see the manager, and that's usually it. That's usually an unsettling feeling. You kind of know what's coming your way. Good reference though to Major League. I like that. Who was it? Was it the the young catcher that didn't want to look, or was it Charlie Sheen? Wow thing. He didn't open it up real quick and said, "You look." Yeah, one time the guys were playing a, a joke on him and they put the card in there, but oh, the manager yeah. didn't really. So he went in there and then you started yelling <laughs> at the manager, but he wasn't really sent out. Line drive left field, but on the move and he can't get there. Carrera drops out in front of him, a base hit for Brad Miller, and down the third base goes Kelly Shopping. Good hitting by Miller, left-handed hitter against the left-handed pitcher. Didn't try to do too much with his pitch that was down and away from him, and he just flips it out in the left field, stays with it. You can see him dig it out. That'll get him a base hit. Again, he's he's had a good spring in a lot of different areas that he that we've seen him. 
Miller last year had the second most hits in the minor leagues with 189. Playing at High Desert and Double A Jackson. Here's Michael Saunders. He has two hits this afternoon. Singled, scored a run back in the first when the Mariners got their two runs. Tie and run at third base and Kelly Shopping. Ground ball out to Ramirez over to second for one. The relay to first base and it's in time for the double play and Scott Casimir gets out of the inning. And that's it for the Mariners in the bottom of the fourth. We go to the fifth. Three, two, Cleveland. Only Mazda. Well, the Indians lead by a score of three to two as we go to the top half of the fifth inning here in Peoria on a beautiful Saturday afternoon out for Cactus League Baseball. Rick Riz along with Mike Lowers along with the GM of the ball club, Jack Sorensic. Jack, thanks for stopping by and uh, tell us a little bit about your thoughts of the way this ball club is coming together. You guys have accomplished, I think, a lot over the last four weeks here. Well, it's been a good spring. I think that anyone that's been around the club understands that uh, it's been, you know, the the vibe is really good. You go in a clubhouse. It's a great group of guys. I think we've had some guys that, you know, are starting to become big leaguers like we hope they would. I think the addition of the veteran players has been a real positive. So, you know, right now, you know, all the arrows are pointing in the right direction. When you were putting this club together over the course of the winter, I know from talking to you and talking, to Eric, towards the end of last year, you start talking about getting some veterans in here that maybe it's time to do that with giving all those kids a chance to play last year. And you have to be really happy with not only getting the guys here, but the production and what they've done this spring. We have been. You know, I think we've seen some really good things with uh, some of our players. Justin Smoke being, you know, a classic example of a guy that is, you know, taken to some instruction and have worked very hard this winter. I think, you know, you've seen some really nice things out of Jesus Montero. You know, the guys, can, Dustin Ackley, you know, had a nice spring for us. So, you know, it's been it's been a lot of positives here, and I think the mix of our young kids growing up a little bit and the veteran players coming in, you know, has worked well. And we understand we got some good news about Asus Montero inside the uh, clubhouse. He got hit in the head on the follow through by the bat back in the second inning. He's okay. He's fine. You know, and actually, you know, I was over there with him, and it's interesting to look at it. It's about the size of a golf ball, oh, literally yeah. the size of a golf ball, right on the uh, top of his head where his hairline is, and. Uh, no concussion, which is good news. You know, just a just a nice little eggnog, I guess you'd say. Can you just uh, quickly, Jack, just kind of go through the process of what was going on with John Garland and, and what happened there? Well, you know, we were in a situation where we had to commit to John on being in the rotation on, uh, you know, on the day that he had his out, and that would have meant he would have been on a 40-man roster. He would have been given a spot in the rotation, and. Uh, you know, financially, we'd had to commit to him for the whole year. So, you know, I think we were in a position where we made it very clear to John that, you know, although, you know, he'd been coming back from surgery, he'd missed 20 months of pitching, 
you know, were we in a position to say this guy was going to be able to last from now to the end of the year? Were we going to be able to take somebody out of the rotation, put him in it? And were, were we going to be able to commit to dollars, you know? So, you know, all those things tied together. And, you know, John said, hey, I get it 100%. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it, you know. And, and you know, I, hey, I'll go somewhere else and maybe someone else will pick me up. And, if, you know, if I don't get picked up, then, hey, I've had a pretty good career. So, and it's not that unusual of a situation. Typically, veteran guys that have been around, that they usually have that type of opt-out thing. So this wasn't a, a real special thing, was it? It was a little different. I mean, usually you don't have opt-outs until the end of spring. Sometimes guys will go to AAA. John was not willing to go to AAA. You know, and I think that, you know, one of the other issues is, you know, he threw 69 pitches the other night. If the guy's in your rotation, you're going to ask this guy to throw 100 pitches. We haven't seen that. You know, there's, there's no evidence that says he is actually going to be able to do that. Now, he might. But I think from our standpoint, you know, that we just couldn't make that commitment yet. And as a result, you know, there's time left for spring training, and he wanted to end up elsewhere. And uh, where someone who might give a chance to be in a rotation. So we'll see how it goes. You know, it's, it's, it's certainly an interesting, uh, you know, I guess, in, uh, the way it played out over the last couple of days. Exactly. And there's a lot of moving parts of that, too, because somebody has to come off the 40 man roster. And you got a lot of talent on that roster. And one of the things, you know, that, you know, you don't underscore that because a big leaguer is a big leaguer and a guy on your 40, you know, maybe the 39th, 40th guy on the roster. But you also have to realize that during the course of the year, you have players in your organization that may very well play on your big league club. And you have to prepare for that. You know, certainly you have to prepare for everything you can. And if we lose a player now and we lose another player at the end of spring training, maybe a third player at the end of spring training, now you go a month into the season, you bring another guy. Now you're starting to get into mm-hmm. some reasonably talented kids, you know, that, that, that I don't think is in our best interest. It's a little bit different this year than the last few spring trainings in that it seems to me, anyway, and correct me please if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that a lot of things are settled with your club, but there are a few things that you're trying to get done here over the last week. Um, can you talk a little bit about Jeremy Bonnerman? I haven't had a chance to see him pitch yet, just where he's at in, in, in this whole thing and how he's looked this spring. Uh, he's done really nice things. You know, his velocity the other day on a minor league side was up to 93 miles an hour, which is a good sign. He feels very good. And I think the one thing that we're real encouraged by is that the work that he's doing between the time he's pitching is really just maintenance, just getting to a point as opposed to, you know, getting, to, getting him to the point where he can go to the mound. You know, he feels like I can do this. Now, mm-hmm. the other side of that is he's about 11 months removed from surgery. So that said, you know, it's fairly quick, you know, and, and we'll just see what happens. He's certainly in, in competition for a spot here, and uh, we'll see. We'll see again. This week will be able to mean a lot. You know, we've got three guys fighting for spots in this rotation at least, and, and we'll see where it ends up at. I, I think one of the things that, that people aren't going to be able to argue with is the job that you've done since you first came here, and you talked about the minor league system and building that, and, and we have certainly have seen that since a lot of those guys are actually here now playing, and, and a lot of them playing well. One of the guys that has really piqued my interest that I hadn't seen a lot of until I was down here over this last week is a kid playing today, and that's Brad Miller. Can you tell us about him and what your expectations for Brad are? You know, again, I, I say this, uh, I've said this publicly, you know, if you think about it. You know, if you and a wild pitch, and here comes Avila on to score, and the Indians have taken a 4-2 to two lead here in the top half of the fifth inning. You know, three years ago we had a kid in the minor leagues named Kyle Seeger, you know, not a lot of people heard of, and Kyle was playing in high desert, um, our high A club, he led all the minor leagues in hits. And, you know, when the season was over, a lot of people said, well, you know, hey, it's high desert, you know, it's a hitter's ballpark, you know, that Bubba Kell League. Well, you know, he went to double A, played great that next year, went to triple A and ended up in the big leagues before, you know, before the midway point. Um, if you look at Brad Miller, it's the exact same time frame. You know, right. Kid out of college, first full season. He was number two in all the minor leagues and hit last in hits last year. The difference is he played half a season in high desert, the other half in double A. He's actually a little bit ahead of where Kyle was, and he was number two in all the minor leagues and hits last year. Great makeup kid. We really like him. He's a shortstop, but he's played second, third. You know, he's in lineup today, third, and, and you know, just a gamer. You know, and a great. He got our Heart and Soul Award last year, which is an award that we created specially because of a guy with his leadership skills. Wow! Line drive off the bat of Giambi, caught by Blake Bevan. Nice catch by Blake, and there's two outs for the Indians here in the top of the pit, visiting with Mariners GM Jack Zarensic. Solid line drive back up the middle, Blake. Well, it looked like it was pretty routine to him. But he picks up an out there. Jack, it seems like 
when you do get down to 25 by April the 1st. Eric Wedge and uh, Carl Willis will will have options as far as giving guys days off and, and lefty righty matchups. I mean you're more versatile I think going into this season. You know and that's something that we also discussed. I th think we're, we are going to be that you know and. I think the one drawback here is we do set we have one really utility infield, you know, and Robert Andino right now who's you know, fighting for a spot here. But um, you know we have the outfield scenario is what it is. I think our catching has been settling in pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. And you know I look at the club and it's you know it's it's a nice mix of young kids. As you say, I think our lineup will be distributed very well between young kids in the right spot, veteran guys in the right spot, right left hand options. So. And, and, you know, Eric spoke to the club today, you know, and he, he had a, it was a very nice talk. You guys, this is a 25-man roster. You know, we're not going to win it with 20 guys or 22 guys. We've got 25 guys out here who can play a lot. So you all need to feel part of it and be a part of it. I think the last thing, you, you've always been honest with everybody in Seattle and the fans about your expectations. What are they going into this year with all the changes that we're seeing from this club? You know, that's hard to say. You know, it really is. I mean, you'd like to... And I wish I could predict something, but I think you just have to look at the club and say, are we improved? Are we better? And I think we are. I think our minor league system is enormously healthy. Um, I think we've got really good kids right on the way, right on a crest of being big league players. But we're still a fairly young big league club when you look at it. You know, we just we yeah. just have brought some veteran guys, which I think has helped this mix and the transition into hopefully we can be as competitive as we can be. I think we're all excited about the year, but you know, we've got to play the game between the white lines. I know one guy you're not concerned about is Felix, but how nice is it to see him have that type of game last night against San Diego? That was pretty special. You know, I think that it's, it's interesting. I was telling the guys this morning, I said, you know, you see guys with 95, 96, 97 mile an hour fastballs. We got a few of them. But Felix makes guys look bad, you know, with that 92, 93 mile an hour fastball, sinker, slider, changeup. And the swings are just they're not good swings. And that's a great indication of a guy that gets, that has yeah. really, really good stuff. Yeah. And his stuff last night was just phenomenal. That changeup breaks up that much, and it looks like a splitter. It's not. He doesn't throw a splitter, but that changeup, he backs off only about three, four miles from his fastball. You know, and it's, you know, his location is, has been so good. His movement has been out of sight, you know, and snaps off the breaking ball. You know, he's, look, he's, this is why we put $175 million in this guy. And a swing and a miss by Carson. Strike three. Indians with a run here in the top half of the fifth. We're at the halfway point after four and a half. Indians lead by a score of four to two. Another base hit for Ibanez. Saunders on the score. Justin continues his hot hitting. And welcome back to the Peoria Sports Complex where the Indians now leading the Mariners by a score of 4-2. to two. Rick Riz along with Dave Valley. 
Val joins us for the second half of the broadcast. And Val, the Mariners looking to get to the veteran left-hander, Scott Casmer. Yes, yeah, Scott Casmer started off the game. It looked like the Mariners were going to make him a very short afternoon. The first four hitters had gotten on base with some four consecutive hits. But since then, he's settled down and starting to make his pitches, making it a little bit tougher on the Mariner hitters. So we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Robert Andino to lead things off. And he takes a look at ball one. Good to hear that uh, Jesus Montero is okay, Val, and I'm sure that happened a few times to you, taking a bat to the side of the head on a follow through. You know, it happened a few times to me, but I think I did it more to other catchers than they, they did it long. to me. I did. I had a long follow through, and I, I nailed a few catchers right on the noggin. Doesn't feel good, does it? No, it, it looked like on Jesus's situation, he wears that that hockey style mask, and there's a little crease in it. And I think that the bat came right in that crease where the, mm. the hard plastic meets up with the front part of the helmet. And yeah. that's why they're talking about he has like a, an egg shaped lump lump on his head. Now, catcher that you're seeing, Marson right here, he, that's kind of the older style where you have a separate helmet and then the mask goes on top. Ground ball, base hit through the right side. Robert Andino, leadoff single here in the bottom of the fifth inning, his second base hit of the afternoon. Well, you, you caught for a long time in the big leagues, but do you remember the first mask you put on as, as a kid? I do. Uh, the, the one that I put on as a kid was just those big old heavy steel masks. Yeah. And I the actually used bars. those, up, you know, until I got to the big leagues. And I think those, they're much heavier, and I don't think you get a, as much impact on those older masks because they were steel. Uh -huh. The newer ones are so light. They're made with titanium. I think a lot of the impact is actually absorbed by the catcher and in, in that face area. Here's Raul Ibanez. Fouls one back out of play. 0 and 1. Ibanez 1 for 2 and an RBI single. Just love seeing Raul Ibanez back in a Seattle Mariner uniform. How nice is that? Raul had a base hit RBI single in the first inning. He just brings such a, a sense of professionalism to this ball club. Have some defensive changes for Cleveland. Swing and a drive deep to right center field. Goodbye baseball to the top of the berm. Raul Ibanez with his fourth springtime home run. And that ties up this game. It's now the Mariners four and the Indians four. And not only does he bring professionalism to this ball club, but he brings a powerful bat from the left side that Eric Wedge is going to like an awful lot during the season. Two run shot by Raul Ibanez. He has three RBIs in this ball game. There is number four for Ibanez, and he crushes this pitch from Casimir. And one of the things you love to see a le off the left handed pitcher, Raul is very good hitting off left handers. Casimir tries to rush a fastball across the top of the zone. It's not going to get past Mr. Ibanez. Ibanez, 19 home runs and fairly limited duty last year with the New York Yankees. Smoke with a drive down the left field line, and this one is going to be a foul ball. Off the wall, foul. Justin Smoke, two for two today with a couple of doubles and a run batted in. And I tell you what, uh, Val, this guy hasn't slowed down at all this spring. He certainly hasn't. Picking up right where he left off last September. Raul had 86 RBIs last year for the New York Yankees. The thing that I love about the addition of Raul, Got a lot of young left handed hitters on this ball club. Mm -hmm. Kyle Seeger, Dustin Ackley, guys that are willing to listen to a veteran like Raul, a guy who's been through it all. He's coming off a, a great season with a winning team. There's a soft liner caught by the second baseman, Jose Ramirez. One out for the Mariners here at the bottom of the fifth inning. And with all of that, it brings a lot of respect from the young guys because they, they were watching Raul in the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. And now he's a teammate. He's been through the fire. He knows what it takes to win. He knows what it takes to be successful at the big league level. And the, the thing about him is he's more than willing to share everything that he's learned over the course of his career with those young guys. And they'll listen to him. So the timing of the return of Ibanez is so valuable for this organization in two ways. Number one, it can still hit and play. And number two, you know, imparting that wisdom to the younger players. Well, certainly Jack Zarensic, who you just had on last, and he would not have brought Raul here if he didn't think he'd be able to perform. But 
that's where the that added value comes in when you have a guy like like Raul who could be like a, a fifth sixth coach yeah. where you know sometimes coaches can't get to those players but when you're an equal as a player to a player and you're looking for that encouragement and you're looking for some wisdom from a, a hitter's approach your mental approach this is a guy who can give it to you Seager with a drive deep to right field and this one is over the head of Carson bounces off the wall and Carson is down rounding second is Seager heading for third and Seager is in at third base with a triple and Carson slow to get up as he made a late lunge for that ball and ran into the wall the base of the wall and now one of the trainers for the Indians going out to check up on Matt Carson and hopefully he's all right. Well he's not looking good it looks like there's a gash over the right right eye. Carson leaps up for this line drive and then loses his balance trips and goes oh, face first man. into the bottom of the wall. Ouch that did not look good. Could not get his balance after he made that lunge for the ball and then he went full head of steam face first into the lower half of the fence. Being looked at by the trainer for the Indians. Sager winds up on a third with the triple but right now the concern is for Matt Carson. The play reminded me of the play Mike Michael Baxter made for Johan Santana in the perfect game back in New York last year where he made a diving play and dove right into the wall. Hopefully Carson is not as severe as Baxter's Baxter ended up missing many months last season. We saw we saw that scraping right above the right eye on that camera shot right after yeah. the play had been dead. It looks like he has a laceration above his right eye and I'm pretty sure that they're going to have to take uh, Carson out of the ball game. Matt Carson gave it a great try on that drive off the bat of Kyle Seager and after he made that lunge he just couldn't regain his balance. He tried to and all of a sudden took off and hit that wall face first. Yeah he took that little extra jump for the line drive that you know the ball down here carries quite a bit. He was going back hard after the play. But just as he missed that ball it looked like his right foot got caught in the warning track and it caused him to trip and unable to really slow down the collision into that right wall into the wall with his right side of his forehead. So they will get Carson out of the ball game. Too many guys and, leaving the field today oh, in man. a cart. Jesus Montero back in the second hit on the side of the head on a swing and a follow through. And and Val, this is the point of spring that your number one thing is to come out of the spring healthy. Well, certainly when Jesus went down and he was laying on the ground, I, I was just kind of concerned for him, for the Mariners, thinking you don't want to start to lose days towards the end of spring training. You want to kind of build up that momentum. And today, Jesus was scheduled to catch the entire game so that he could start to build up his stamina to be able to start playing every day going nine innings. So it, it was a little bit of a setback, but it's the good news is that there's not a concussion yeah. and it should not be a, a long lasting situation for Jesus Montero. And the Mariners have seven days, seven games rather, left in the exhibition season. Six down here in the Cactus League, and that one exhibition game on March the 30th in Salt Lake City against the Colorado Rockies. So a new right fielder for the Indians, and that is Delvi Sid. Delvi Sid, the new right fielder replacing Carson. Hopefully, Mr. Carson is okay. Here is Michael Dow, the new catcher who replaced Jesus Montero. He sends a fly ball into deep center field. Naquin going back to the warning track, and this one is off the top of the batter's eye. So here comes Seager on to score. Michael Dowd in at second with an RBI double. And the Mariners now have the lead 5-4. to four. For Michael Dowd, he's got some adrenaline kicking through him right now. I guarantee you when Jesus went down, he was thinking, oh, man, I'm in the ball game. And then for him to be able to take this ball and hit it off the center of the batter's eye in center field. Now there's a strong wind blowing out here right now, but this ball was really juiced by Michael Dowd. So the Mariners with three runs in here in the bottom of the fifth inning to regain the lead five to four. And the batter is Casper Wells. 
That pitch by Scott Casimir low and inside in the dirt. Ball one. You know, that's the other thing about the offense of this ball club, Al. Last year and the year before, if the Mariners were down early in the game, it was tough to come back. That's not going to be the case this year. If they're down early in the ball game, they have the ability to bounce back and try to win a game. Well, coming into today's game, the Seattle Mariners were leading the Cactus League in extra base hits. They came in with 109, and today I believe they've got, they've added at least four. A couple of doubles by Justin Smoke, that double by Dowd, and the home run by Raul Ibanez. There's actually six more today, so they've got yeah. 115 extra base hits. Nick Hagedon, a left hander, warming up down in the bullpen for the Indians, a kid from the Pacific Northwest. Swing and a miss by Wells, two and one on Casper. But you're absolutely right, Rico. You know, for, for Eric Wedge, this is a completely different oh, yeah. offensive lineup. A lineup that's going to put some runs on the board, it's going to pick up the pitchers when they've had some some tough outings, couple of tough innings. They're not going to be able to. Or they won't have to just say, hey, we're not going to be able to score any runs. Yeah. Because this, this lineup's going to be scoring some runs this season. And, and the key about scoring runs, Val, and winning ball games a lot of times is the bottom part of the order. If you can turn around that order at the bottom part of the order, do your share of hitting, that gets you back to the middle part of the order. Well, those guys can do a lot more damage. And Eric has played around with a lot of uh, lineups this spring, and rightly so. So he can find out how many options he can have during the course of the season starting on April the 1st. Well, just the guys that they brought in over the winter. We, you know, we've talked about Raleigh Banyas, but to add Kendry Morales, Michael Morris, Jason Bay starting to swing the bat really well. He had a few hits the other night. Little pop up outside of first over is McGinnis, and he makes the catch on the warning track. Long throw, third is cut off by the shortstop Lindor, holding it second is Dowd. And, and the thing I like about the addition of those guys, Rick, is as you look at last year's lineup, you had guys like Michael Saunders, Kyle Seeger hitting in the three and four holes. Those that puts a lot of pressure. That is a lot of on pressure on a young guy. Yeah. So now they can just kind of slide down, and it's going to be interesting to see how much more relaxed they'll be and the impact that it will have on their numbers because they're not hitting in that three and four right. role. Exactly. Plus, they got that year under their belt, that full year under the belt. Where they have figured it out a little bit more. Well, and both those guys just had really solid seasons. Michael Saunders really took a leap forward. Kyle Seeger, you know, we always felt like he was just a really solid baseball player, but put up some good numbers 86 RBIs, mm -hmm. 20 home runs. Kelly Shopik is two for two on the day with a single and a double. Fouls one off the catcher, Marson. And it's 0 2 on Kelly. Three runs in for the Mariners here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The big hit, that two run home run by Raul Ibanez. Here's a look at Michael Saunders, and he basically reinvented himself prior to last season. Well, sometimes when it takes you to that place where when I'm really struggling, then I've got to do some drastic measures. Mm -hmm. If things aren't working the way that I'm doing it, I need to find a way to be successful. And, and he made some drastic changes in his approach. Here's a foul ball up here to the booth. Oh, man, almost came in. That was a heat seeking missile that hit right off the top of our window. And it's all clear. Everything's all right. Guys are looking up here. <laughs> Took one of those off my noggin and BP about four weeks ago. Did you? The lower field, yeah. Don't want to. Did it leave a mark? Again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. After I woke up, I had a chance to see it. And a swing and a miss by Shopik for strike three. And that will retire the side, but not before the Mariners get three runs to take the lead. The big hit, the home run by Raul. And after five innings of play, Mariners five and the Indians four.
Emerald Queen Casino welcoming showbiz icon, singer, and comedian Jerry Lewis, April 13th. For tickets, go to emeraldqueen.com. And by Sterling Bank. Nobody works harder for you. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. That is a look at Hoover Dam as we uh, get you back out to the ballpark. And Dave and Rick, I cannot vouch for the other things we have seen, all of the other scenics. I have been to Hoover Dam. Quite impressive. Definitely worth the trip. That's beautiful, Jen. Jen, I Hoover thought it was Dam. the Grand Coulee Dam. I'm going with Jen. <laughs> So she am I. Knows, she knows what Clearly. she's talking about. She's been there. I, she's been there, yeah. Right. So it's got to be who She's an eyewitness. Yes. How about the eyewitnesses out there in the berm? Great view of the ball game. Plenty of sunshine today. Game time temperature, 77 degrees. Hope they brought the sunblock. Need it today. Here's a line for Blake Bevan, Val. Yeah, Blake, uh, throughout this ball game, I, I was a little... Surprised at the pitch pitch selection early in the game through a lot of breaking balls got behind and the Cleveland Indians took advantage and scored three in the top of the third one in the top of the fifth. Interesting note in this ball game zero put outs through five innings by a Mariner outfield. Blake Bevin continues to fight for that spot in the starting rotation. Low liner into right field, a base hit for Marson. Leading things off here in the top half of the sixth, the Mariners lead by a score of five to four. All right, time to check in with the booth for today's Ask the Booth question. This comes from Eldon. How much playing time do you think Raul Ibanez will get in 2013? Well, that's not an, an easy question, mm -hmm. but I think Eric Wedge is going to find ways to get Raul's bat in the lineup. And when the days that he's not in the lineup, uh, you could be certain that if uh, there's an opportunity late in the ball game to be able to pinch hit, the ability to have power coming off the bench, kind of like what we saw last year with the New York Yankees, pinch hit for Alex Rodriguez there in the playoffs. Home run. Great approach. He's done it before. He's been successful. But I think you'll see him against right handers in the that DH spot. I think he's going to play some left field as well. Get his share of at bats. And then, you know, the way as, he's swinging the bat right yeah, now. And, and as the season plays out, you know, guys, whether they sh they're struggling or not, uh, Eric Wedge is going to play it around, but he, he'll find ways to get that bat in the lineup, no mm -hmm. question about it. Because he can still do what he did in the bottom of the fifth inning with that. Long two run home run is fourth of the spring. And as you look at what Raul was able to accomplish last year with the New York Yankees, he didn't play every day, but he still uh, still hit the ball out of the ballpark, still drove in runs. I think he had 84 RBIs last year for the Yankees and hit 19 home runs. So I, I'd love to see him get 400 at bats this year. You know, I, th I think if he got more than 400, number. that that would probably be a surprise. That that would tell me that maybe somebody got hurt. But I think in the original plan that Eric Wedge has for Raul, it's going to be between 350 to 400 at bats. Guys coming off the bench will be so much more potent. You know, this year with a chance to do damage with one swing of the bat. Line drive over the head of Miller at third into left field. Lindor with a single the other way that will chase Marson down to second base. And here come the Indians one more time and Blake Bevin has been in a jam in every inning six innings the leadoff batter has been aboard against Blake. There's a little change up down and away. He just reaches out hits it right off the end of the bat. And just over the outstretched glove of Miller at third base. So two on for the Indians nobody out. Tying run at second go ahead run is on at first base and here is Jose Ramirez. Cleveland though on the afternoon. Yes, they're getting on, but they're one for six with the runners in scoring position. Close to third Miller. Strike at the knees. 0 and 1. The other thing I like about Blake Bell is that it doesn't seem like he gets too bothered out there in phase. He still has his concentration and He's done that uh, this afternoon coming back to get some big outs. He's got great poise out there on the mound. It's hard, hard to tell by looking at his facial expressions whether he's doing well, whether he's struggling. 
I think the best thing that break that Blake brings to this ball club is his ability to throw strikes. And that's something that has been missing here this afternoon. He hasn't had real good command of his fastball or that breaking pitch. And strike two on Ramirez. How about this stat, Val? Issued only 24 walks last year, 152 innings. That was the second fewest in the major leagues last year by a pitcher with at least 150 innings. And he really came on strong after he got recalled from Triple A Tacoma last six weeks of the season. He he made some great strides with his command and that curveball. Line to the right field for a base hit. Marson rounding third, heading home. He'll score. Up of the ball is Saunders. A throw to second base and safe there is Ramirez with an RBI double around to third goes Lindor. And the Indians have tied up this game at five to five. Still nobody out here in the top half of the sixth. Yeah, we're seeing Blake getting that ball elevated in the strike zone. His fastball is just middle, middle, just underneath the letters as it gets laced out there in the right center field for a double. Lindor at third, Ramirez on at second. Here's Tyler Naquin. Naquin is ball for two, is lined out. Nice diving catch by Andino. Mariners with a defensive change here in the sixth inning. Andino now playing second, and the new shortstop is Chris Taylor. We had a big hit last night against San Diego. Minor league shortstop coming up to play in that game. That broke up the 1 1 tie, and the Mariners behind the pitching of Felix Hernandez. Beat the Padres last night by a score of three to one. Helen for Blake Let Blake Bevan. This is not the type of outing you want to have this close to the end of spring training when some very tough decisions are going to have to be made about this rotation. That's inside ball two, two balls and no strikes. Pin down to the wire, Val. John Garland has chosen to. Leave the ball club. He had the opt out as of yesterday. I believe as of today at noon. Became an official. Exercised it yesterday, and then there was a 24 hour period for it to be finalized. Popped up and out of play on the third base side, and the count is now two and one on Naquin. So as you look at this rotation, the guys that are fighting for that spot. So Garland's out. You've got Erasmo Ramirez. Mm -hmm. You've got Blake Bevan. You have Jeremy Bondeman. Now, Erasmo really struggled a couple of nights ago as well. Now we're seeing Blake struggling here this afternoon. It, these are the type of things that makes it make that decision that much more difficult for Eric Wedge and his staff. And you have the kid too, Mauer, Brandon Mauer, who's been outstanding. He has the best DRA in the Cactus League, 1.20. Ground ball to third, diving off the glove of Brad Miller. Here comes Linder on to score. Ramirez running third. He'll score. And up of the ball is the shortstop, Chris Taylor. So two runs are in for the Indians, who now lead by a score of seven to five. And down in second base is Naquin with a double. Well, let's take a look at the Mariners calendar brought to you by Sleep Country USA. Mariners home opener will be on April the 8th against the Houston Astros. We'll be giving away the magnetic schedules. And then April the 10th, Grand Slam night. Get your tickets now. That's the opening series at home between the Mariners and the newest member of the American League, the Astros. Stephen Colsheen, tall right hander, warming up down to the bullpen for the Mariners. His pitching coach, Carl Willis, out to have a talk with Bevan. Seven runs for the Indians. Three in for the tribe here in the top half of the sixth. So Blake stays in there. See if he can get the final three outs here in the sixth inning. This will be his final inning of work. And I think that's what Carl Willis went out there to encourage him about getting through this inning. Even though he's been struggling here this afternoon, he still needs to get his work in. He still needs to get that pitch count up to where they want him to be. Here's Ezekiel Carrera. Broken bad liner gets on by Bevin into center field for a base hit. Naquin rounding third and he'll score. The throw to the plate is cut off by Smoke. So give Carrera an RBI single. And it's now the Indians eight and the Mariners five. 
He takes his pitch right back up the middle again. It's a fastball right out over Broadway. Thigh high. It looked like Blake Bevan was a little uh, deceived by the speed of that yeah. ball coming back at him. But a line drive last inning off the bat of Jason Giambi made that one look easy. But this one got on by off the bat of Carrera. Here's Tony Wolters. And there goes the runner at first pitch outside of ball thrown on to second. By Dowd not in time a stolen base for Carrera. Not much of a chance for Dowd to throw out Carrera. Got a tremendous jump off of first base. Mariners have three catchers still in the major league camp. Of course, there's Montero and Shopik. The third catcher is Jesus Sucre, very good defensive catcher, and he can throw. But right now, he's catching Hisashi Iwakuma down at one of the lower fields in a minor league game. So Preston in the service uh, is this young catcher from the minor league camp, Michael Dowd. What a thrill for these kids. And Dowd had a big double in the fifth. Rick, it, it absolutely is a thrill for those guys that come up from the minor leagues and get an opportunity to play in a big league ball game. Fly ball to left field toward the line on the run. Ibanez can't get there. Drops in front of him and then drops the ball but recovers in a hurry to keep. The runner at third after the turn, that's Carrera. So give Walters a base hit. That'll bring up Chris McGinnis. He takes a little, it's a little change up on the outside part of the plate. Just gets served out there in the left field. No harm, no foul here on Raleigh Banyas. The runner had already pulled up at third base. So the Indians have runners on at first and third and still nobody out here in the top half of the sixth inning. With you talking about the, the experience for Dow to be able to be in this ball game. I remember my first spring training. I was 18 years old and Darren Johnson was the manager and I had a chance to play against the San Diego Padres down in Yuma faced Raleigh fingers really when I was 18 and I remember the other day because the next day I was looking at the newspapers because you know we didn't have the internet and all that stuff had to wait for the box score. Wait, I wanted to see my name in that box score man yeah. and, and my name Valley in that catching role in that box score that had to be a thrill just like when you got your first bubblegum cart curve ball popped up shallow left field going out is Taylor coming in Ibanez it is going to be Taylor the shortstop who makes the catch and there's the first out of the inning. I think part of why I wanted to see it in the box score was to prove that it wasn't a dream, that it actually did happen. Yeah. It was there in ink. Jordan Henry is the new hitter for the Indians. Blake struggling this inning, 19 pitches already. One out, two on, eight, five Indians. Oh, and one. Indians have won 15 games for their new manager, Terry Francona, this spring. 15 and 10 with a couple of ties. Mariners 18 and 8. They just haven't been able to move by the Kansas City Royals who are on top of the Cactus League. With 19 wins. Yeah, they've been playing some good baseball. That's, and it's a very surprising team. You can't look past the Kansas City Royals anymore. Got a lot of good young hitters. They got a great young catcher in Salvador Perez. Mm -hmm. Went out and added James Shields to anchor that starting rotation. They're going to be a team to have to, to be contended with there in the Central. That's why they felt they could give up uh, all that talent. And Will Myers, who was the number one prospect in the minor leagues this year. Breaking ball in the dirt, knocking it down is Dowd. Checks in with the runners right away, Carrera and Walters. There's Carrera, there's Walters.
Fouled away up the first base side up by the Indians dugout. One and two on Henry. Val at this point in the spring were you ready to get going. Absolutely. Yeah, as soon as you got into that under 10 mark. You know I believe the Mariners have eight more days here in spring training before they, they head off to Salt Lake City. These guys they're the, the guys that are playing every day they're ready to go physically mentally. Inside ball two to balls and two strikes. Lake Bevan wow. 100 pitches. 70 strikes 30 balls. Part of his problem though today was a lot of those balls were early in the count mm -hmm. which put the Cleveland Indians in good hitters counts. He's got 15 hits here this afternoon. Little looper to shallow left field going out as Taylor can't get to it a base hit. There comes Carrera on to score. It's now nine to five Cleveland, and that's run number five. The Indians have scored here in the top half of the six. And Eric Wedge has to go get Blake Bevan here in the six, just over 100 pitches. So two on for the tribe, and still only one out here in the sixth. Nine five Cleveland as the change is made. Stay with us. We'll be back after this timeout. The Mariners trail 9 5 against the Indians. Top of the sixth inning as we're in a pitching change down there in the desert. Hello, everyone. I'm Jen Mueller at the Ford Sports Desk as we check in on some other spring training highlights. You know, the Mariners are a little more than a week away from the season opener against the A's. Today, Oakland faced their Bay Area rivals, the Giants. Oakland's Ioannis Espedes picks up right where he left off last year. He homers off Tim Lincecum. He had 23 last year at last check. The A's lead at 73. And in Florida today, it's the Red Sox and the Pirates. Boston hoping former Oregon State star Jacoby Ellsbury can stay healthy this year. He contributes two hits today, including that double. Clay Buckholz looks solid through five and a third innings for Red Sox. He makes just one mistake to Garrett Jones that sails out of the park. Despite the effort, the Pirates win 5-3 as we get you back out to Rick and Dave. All right, Jen, thank you very much. Now pitching for the Mariners, a uh, kid from the minor league camp, Stephen Colsheen, and the first pitch gets away from the catcher, Dowd, and down to third base goes Walters. Things are getting a little sloppy here oh. for the Mariners. It's been a long inning. But Colsheen comes in with a fastball, and Dowd I would imagine has been charged with a pass ball. Cole Sheen last season in the minor leagues appeared in 31 ball games, seven and three record with a 3.97 ERA. He was at Class A Clinton, Class A High Desert, and Double A Jackson for one game. Toss over to first base. That'll get Jordan Henry back to the bag. So Stephen Cole Sheen, he's got to be excited. His first spring game. 
And Bell, that's why big league clubs bring four or five minor leaguers with them at home and on the road uh, during the Cactus League season. Yeah, we've, we've seen many games like this where they've just kind of opened up the Cleveland Indians scoring five here in the top of the sixth inning. They've got nine runs up on the board, 16 hits. And we've got three more to play. Cole Sheen, 24 years of age, big kid, 6'6, 223. Breaking ball is bounced foul out by the Mariners' dugout. By Delby Sid, and the count is one and two on Sid. Cole Sheen, Mariners' 45, uh, 45th round selection in the June 2010 draft. Grew up in Oklahoma. Fouled out of play in the right field side and the count is still one and two on Sid. But one thing we have seen this spring training is that the Mariners have a lot of power arms down in the minor leagues. Some big guys, big body guys like Cole Sheen. The kid that was very impressive at spring training was uh, Carson Smith. Just called down, uh, just sent down a couple of days ago, swinging a miss by Sid. Strike three. So Colsheen comes in and strikes out the first bat that he faces. And there's two outs for the Indians here in the top of the sixth. Colsheen just powers his four seam fastball right across the top of the strike zone. Gets a swing and a miss. She had a, had a little tail on the deck, moving away from the right handed hitter. And here's catcher Lou Marsan who led off this top of the sixth inning with a single. Five runs for the Indians in this inning. Strike called 0 and 1. What an opportunity for a young player Val to open up some eyes in a game like this. You know the, what you want as a young player is to go back down tomorrow to the minor leagues and somebody like Eric Wedge remembers what you did yesterday. Mm -hmm. He's kind of planting a seed right now this young man. Up high, ball one, one and one. Why do you think Chris Taylor is out there today? Chris Taylor at shortstop had the big hit, the game winning hit last night, late in the game against San Diego to break up a one one tie. And he's out there again. Chris Taylor earned another call. Yeah. I'm sure he woke up pretty energized today. Made a few phone calls. Check swing, pitch in the dirt, knocking it down is Dowd. Cole Shane, a good fastball, mid 90s. Nice hard slider, one that we've seen in just in this brief outing that he's got pretty good control of. Two and two to count. Today a big change from last night. Last night with Felix Hernandez on mm. the mound, it was he was like a hot knife through butter. One, two, three, one, two, three. Waltz through the lineup. Nine, San Diego Padres. He had nine strikeouts. Nine strikeouts, six in a row. Seventy pitches, fifty of them for strikes. Retired the final thirteen batters that he faced. He's right on schedule. Uh, he's ready. We had a chance if. Visit with Fifi Felix Hernandez uh, during the ball game today in the top half of the second. Talked to a couple of the San Diego Padres executives this morning, and they were sitting right behind home plate in the first row, so they had a bird's eye seat. Swing and a fly ball into center field. Coasting over is Casper Wells. He's there and makes the catch, and that will finally retire the side. But the Indians do a lot of damage here in the top half of the sixth inning. Five runs. They take the lead after five and a half. Indians nine, and the Mariners five.
lot of funny numbers up there on the scoreboard as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Indians now lead nine to five. Safe friends spend opening night with family and friends at Safeco Field with a special group offer. Not only will you guarantee you'll be on hand to celebrate one of the biggest events of the year at a discounted price, but each member of your group will receive a commemorative opening night T-shirt. To book your group for the home opener, visit Mariners.com slash group. 77 degrees at game time. Nice cold slurpee out there on the berm here at the Peoria Sports Complex. Vinny Pistano will take over in relief for the Indians. They have some defensive changes as well. Quincy Lattimore is out in left field, but he, Val here in the numbers for Pistano. Pistano, the setup man for the what do they call them themselves? The bullpen mafia appeared in 70 ball games, a three and three record, 2.57 ERA. Cleveland Indians, one of the highlights of that ball club from last year was the strength of their bullpen. Brad Miller will lay things off for the Mariners, and he takes a strike from Pistano, and it's 0 and 1. We have a new catcher for the Indians, Omar Santos. Taken over from Lou Marson, fouled away by Miller. And the count is 0 and 2. Miller 339 average at high desert. Then he hit 320 at double A Jackson. Breaking ball, strike three called. Pistano strikes out Miller. And there's one out for the Mariners here in the bottom half of the sixth. You were taking a look at the stats of Brad Miller from last year. He had over 700 plate appearances last season combined. That's a lot of opportunities out there, and he did a pretty good job with it. Had over 200 hits. Good ball player. Can help you out at shortstop and at second base, but they're getting a look at Miller at third base. Never has played third, but that just makes your value go up, Val, if you can add that extra position over at the hot corner. Well, typically, if, if you can handle yourself that short, you can pretty much play just about any position yeah. on the baseball field. He's a very good athlete. And as you talk to different scouts and their assessment of of Brad Miller, they, you know, they always kind of come back to his, he's a baseball player, mm -hmm. which he, he, right he, right. he knows how to play the game, gives you a full effort every time he's out there. Even goes up there without the batting gloves, which is a rarity these days. Ground ball foul up the third baseline by Saunders. Now goes the one and two on Michael. He's obviously never played in Chicago in April. <laughs> Someday he will. And he might put on the batting gloves. Ken Hawk Carlson was the first. He used his golf gloves. Breaking ball, strike three call. Pistano with a couple of strikeouts on the first two batters that he faces. So two outs, and here is second baseman now, Robert Andino, started off the day at shortstop. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Seattle Mariners Baseball Club. And Dino with two hits today. Roberts had a nice spring. It's going to be a great addition to this ball club with his ability to play so many different positions. Give guys days off when they need him. But it's not like he's just a fill in. He's a guy who can do some damage offensively. He runs well. He's got a good solid glove. And Bell, that's where I think the Mariners will be so much stronger this year with the guys coming off the bench. We talked about earlier, but Andino comes over from an organization that also surprised a lot of people last year the Baltimore Orioles. They made it to the playoffs. Oftentimes the, the players that you have on the bench can be overlooked. But if you look at the good teams the teams that compete every single season in, season in and season out. Most of the time they have very strong benches guys who can come off and pitch it from the left side and the right side with some power. And here comes Raul Ibanez. One on and two away. The Indians lead by a score of nine to five. 
And that was the first walk by either team this afternoon. Bunch of base runners. Look at that. 29 hits up there on the uh, scoreboard. Indians have 16, Mariners 13. Oh, and one on Raul. Rick, that's from the starters. The two starters have given up 29 hits today. Yeah. You don't see that very often. No. Bevin getting the start today for the Mariners and Scott Casmir working on his comeback, and he may make this Cleveland ball club. Well, this was a big start for him. But he gave up five runs. It wasn't looking good for Scott Casmir. There's a line drive in the right field, a base hit for Ibanez. That'll chase Andino down to second. The throw in from the right fielder Sid, a little offline, the third baseman. Tony Wolters had to go get it. So Ibanez with his third hit today. Raul still has that quick bat, fastball up in the zone. Able to stay up on top of it. It's a sinking line drive to straightaway right field. And that'll do it for Raul Ibanez as he gets a pinch runner. Nice afternoon for the veteran left handed hitter. So Ibanez's work is done for the day, going three for four, including a home run and three runs batted in. El Monte is the pinch runner for Ibanez at first. And here is Justin Smoke with a chance to do some damage. RBI doubled in the first, doubled in the third, lined out to the second baseman Ramirez his last time up. Strike 0 1. Justin Smoke had a nice afternoon so far from the right side facing the left handed Scott mm -hmm. Kazmir. A missile down the left field line one hop the wall at the 340 mark. And hit a missile out there to right center field one hop the wall to right center. He sure is looking like a different hitter from what we saw last year. Well he's really worked on a lot during the offseason brought it right into the spring popped up and out of play third base side and it's. One and two now on Smoke. And that's got to feel good if you're a young guy. And really, Smoke didn't have a lot of at bats in the minor leagues when he got to Seattle after that big trade a few years ago for Cliff Lee. He only had about 636 at bats. To work during the offseason, be able to take that into the spring and have success. And a swing and a miss for strike three. And that will retire the side. No runs for the Mariners, one hit. And two left on after six innings of play here in Peoria. It's the Indians nine and the Mariners five. Only my. Then from the berm there at the Peoria Sports Complex, right now the ends trail 9-5. Both teams have pounded out a combined 30 hits today. Hello, everyone. I'm Jen Mueller at the Ford Sports Desk. And as Rick Riz mentioned earlier in the game, Hisashi Iwakuma was in action today in a B-League game against the Reds. 
Kuma goes seven innings, gives up ten hits for just two runs. One of those runs came during a four-out second inning that included a misplayed fly ball. He struck out five, didn't walk anyone, and left the game with a 3-2 lead. So overall, a very solid day for Kuma as we get you back out to Dave Valley and Rick Ritz. Guys? All right, thank you, Jen, and welcome back to the Peoria Sports Complex. We go to the top half of the seventh inning. Indians lead by a score of 9-5 to five with a new pitcher valve for the Mariners. Right-hander Danny Farquhar. He appeared in 44 games last year with a 2.65 ERA. Give up three home runs. Opponents hit only 199 off the right-hander. So Farquhar takes over from Colsheen. Colsheen came on and retired the two batters that he faced in the sixth inning. A long inning for Blake Bevan. Francisco Lindor with a strike and the count is 0-1. He was able to strike out Delvey Sid and then get Lou Marson to fly out to center field. So nice shot by Colsheen. Ground ball foul up the third base side and the count is 0-2 on Lindor. Farquhar played with five different ball clubs last year. He ended with Tacoma where he was 1 and 0 with a 0 0.54 ERA in 12 appearances. He had four saves. After he came over from the New York Yankees in that trade for Ichiro on July 23rd. Breaking ball stays high and outside. Two and two. That's a lot of movement. Five ball clubs. Five clubs. A lot of frequent flyer in miles. One season. A lot of shipping. Not a lot of fun. A lot of different apartments. Fly ball, left field, straight away. Denny Amante is there, and El Monte makes the catch. El Monte replacing Ibanez in left field. Although for Farquhar, if you're climbing the ladder, not, it's not such a. That's okay. Not such a pain. That's a good way to go. So one away for Cleveland and here is Jose Ramirez their second baseman who has two hits today a single a double a run scored and a run batted in. Oh and one Val been around for a long time. What was it like playing an old Cleveland Municipal Stadium. I loved it. I loved hitting there. Really? There was something about that park. It was fast. Oh 80,000 seats for football and the only time that it was ever filled. I remember we were there for July 4th they had the big July 4th mm -hmm. fireworks and then the next day I think there was about 3,000 people in the ballpark the mistake by the late but for me as a hitter great hitting background. Uh, you didn't want to play there in April or in September because it was so cold mm -hmm. with that wind coming off the lake. Saw fly ball left field. El Monte is there and he puts it away for the second out of the inning. Well, don't miss the latest episode of Mariners Mondays next week. Watch as Felix dominates the Yankees in early August of last season and relive the most entertaining game of the year as the Supreme Court develops in Seattle. Catch all the action Monday at 7.30 p.m. Root Sports, your home for Mariners baseball. I was scared to broadcast at Old Municipal Stadium. Why is that? Every game. The press box, at least the radio booths, the windows weighed about 200 pounds. Solid steel. They were huge. And they didn't slide back or forth. They didn't open up left or right. You had to pull them up. There was a bar on top of the roof of the radio booth with these two metal grappling hooks <laughs> that you see on, like, dead deadliest were you, were you bonded and licensed to do that kind of work no and I would have to stand on a chair and uh, David oh, go okay I'll, that. I'll hold the window for you so I had to push the window him. up oh, of course I did he was my partner he had my back and then I had to grab that grappling hook and and connect that uh, window up to that uh, that bar and then it sat there and had to do the other one there was two windows so prior to going into Cleveland, you had to start lifting weights. Oh yeah, and getting getting ready for the for the window for the pregame work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish you could have seen it. Now, I, I, I honest to goodness, I think they weighed about 200 pounds, two of them, and it took that grappling hook. And every time, you know, ball came out of the booth, and, or I'd look back at Kevin Kremen, who was our producer engineer, I'd, I'd see, I'd look up at the hook, and make sure it was still pretty well secure. Because if that window just ever didn't came loose, flat. Dave and I were done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
And strike three call Danny Farquhar strikes out Tyler Naquin and it's a one two three top of the seventh inning for the Indians. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning seventh inning stretch time nine five Cleveland. Indians lead by a score of nine to five seventh inning stretch time here with the Peoria Sports Complex and a couple of fans grooving out there dancing with the stars and uh, how about this okay you got these messages out there here comes this one Kelly G will you marry me and here's the happy couple hopefully the answer will be yes the gentleman his name is Tom Greibel on a knee says will you marry me Kelly he's got the ring in his right hand what we're talking, talking and she oh! says yes and she slips on the ring Score. yes now, you know if you do that at the ballpark you better make sure the answer is yes that'd be kind and of embarrassing wouldn't it it happened one time in Texas we're in Texas and the gal ran away Ooh. you know they, they got him on the video screen that's not a good sign, Rico. But no, it's not. <laughs> that would be bad. But fortunately for old Tom, Kelly said yes, and uh, we're all invited to the wedding. New pitcher for the Indians, veteran right hander Matt Caps delivers a strike. She actually ran away. She ran away. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah. They got the camera there, and she was under the supposition that, uh, you know, for some other reason, obviously. And then the sign goes up. So and so, will you marry me? Ground ball, tricky hop, drop step by Walters at third, toss across in time. And there's one away. Nice play by Tony Walters over at third base. Matt Caps, and that was right Chris Taylor. Well traveled reliever. Last season with the Minnesota Twins, appeared in 30 ball games, had 14 saves. ERA of 3.68. That brings up Michael Dowd. That's a high fly ball deep into left field. Lattimore going back to the warning track. He's got some room and he makes the catch. So two outs for the Mariners here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, keeping track of Mariner games all season long is made easy with a Mariner calendar, and it just so happens that the first 15,000 fans through the gates on Friday, April the 12th. Pick up their very own thanks to BASF for tickets to see the Mariners take on the Rangers and take home a Mariner calendar. Visit Mariners.com. Two up and two down, and here is Casper Wells, 9 5 Cleveland. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. A lot of runs this afternoon, 30 hits combined for the two ball clubs. Casper 0 for 3 on the day. Hoping to get things turned around and oh way up and in and that hit him on the back. So Caps nails Casper Wells and he's on at first base hit by pitch one on and two outs. His fastball just rides up and in it looks like he gets Casper. 
on that left tricep. Casper turns away and it. Those are the ones that hurt. You know, the, the when you get hit right on the muscle the mm -hmm. next morning when you get back to the ballpark and you want to start to swing the bat again. Got some swelling in there. It's going to leave a mark in it. It will kind of like the one that hits you on your head. Oh man. It really got you good, huh? Well, it bounced in front of me. This ball hit by Casper Wells, BP, or you know, about uh, ten o'clock in the morning. And I was really paying attention. Obviously, I walked through the gate to the left field corner, took one step, the ball hit on the warning track in front of me, down the left field line, hit me in the chest and off my face. Ouch! That woke me up. All the way, and then the next day. Jesus Montero, who, by the way, was injured in this game with that bat on the follow through by one of the Indians hitters. Came up to me, says, Hey, Rick, how you doing? You feel okay? I says, Yeah, he's using the like, neck is sore. He says, Now you know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He made one of the the critical mistakes is that you walked onto a baseball field and you were not ready. Yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have seen it. Anyway. Well hit left field. And this one is caught at the warning track by Lattimore. Nice running catch and a ball hit by Kelly Shopik. And that will end the inning. We go to the top half of the eighth. Indians up by a score of nine to five. Cleveland as we zip to the top half of the eighth inning great side right here father and son Raul Ibanez along with his son RJ uh, spending some time with dad down here at spring training. Nothing that's better. pretty cool right there. Absolutely nothing better for a dad to be out oh. here with your boy. How about that something special time for Sterling Bank nobody works harder for you. And how about this Raul Ibanez this afternoon with another home run his fourth of the spring he had three RBIs today Val. Big afternoon for Raul the veteran left handed hitter three hits with that long home run to right field. Him and his boy are going to have a good meal tonight. He's going to the food's going to taste really good. <laughs> so RJ this morning with his uniform on and this is like uh, nine o'clock in the morning. He all, already was filthy and that red clay all over him. He and Jason Phillips son were diving all over the place. Fans enjoying the game up there in the berm here at the Peoria Sports Complex and why not on this sunny Saturday afternoon here in the Valley of the Sun. I was talking to Raul a couple of nights ago after the the night game and RJ was out there just running around right before we, he was heading back to the house and he was talking about how great it was to take a look at Charlie Furbush's numbers from last year. How great it was to have RJ around yeah. during spring training he's old enough now to to know the do's and the don'ts of being yeah. in the clubhouse yeah. and, and I told him I said my, my favorite years playing was when I was in Texas and my son was able to dress out. Philip was in the locker right next to me shagging 
balls in batting practice. There was nothing quite like it. Oh man, that had to be something pretty nice for the both of you. Obviously, the new pitcher is Charlie Furbush. So Charlie takes over here in the top half of the eighth inning. This is Quincy Latimer. Leading things off for the tribe. Nine runs, 16 hits for Cleveland. Little low. Ball two, two, and one the count. The closest I can come to that was my son Nick. Worked in the visiting clubhouse for a couple of nights uh, with uh, Freddie Ginzali. Freddie asked him to work in the clubhouse and we were playing the Kansas City Royals. And I said, Nick, you know, just be like a little mouse. You don't want to be seen. Just be real quiet and just do what Freddie needs you to do. And uh, Tim Belcher had a bad day that night. The son of Mark Shapiro, the president of the Cleveland Indians. Belcher had a rough night that night. And Nick said, Dad, uh, he wasn't real happy. He, he <laughs> I think he used the baseball bat. Here's a pop up in behind first base. Justin Smoke is there and he makes a catch and there's one away. So what'd you do? He said, I just sat there and stayed out of the way, like you said. Say, friends, subscribe to MLB.TV Premium today and watch over 150 select spring training games live, plus every regular season game live or on demand on over 250 mobile and connected devices. Visit Mariners.com for details. Tim Belcher did a great job for the Mariners back in 1995. Here is Tony Walters, the third baseman. Oh, and one. Man, Charlie sure made a nice conversion valve from a starter to a reliever, has he? Did a great job for Eric Wedge last year, coming out of that bullpen. A great job against left handers. Not everybody can make the transition that easily. You know, first, you have to accept it mentally. Yeah. You got, you got to be okay with it. You got to be okay with going from a starter to a reliever or vice versa. We've seen guys in the pen trying to become starters. It seems like you have to accept what the next advantage is. Brown ball, a little wide at first, but Justin Smoke is there. A little toss over to Charlie at the bag, and he gets there in time to get Walters for the out. And there's two away. As a starter, the advantage is you know you, you know when you're going to pitch, you prepare for it, you get your bullpen in, and then the advantage for being a reliever is you take a look at this play. Justin Smoke, little flip over to Furbish at the bag, is that you might be able to get in three games, four games during the course of a week. And there's value to a ball club on both ends, you know, whether you're a starter or a reliever. And certainly last year, Charlie had a great opportunity to make a lot of appearances for Eric Wedge. And I believe he'll be doing that same thing. That's playing that same role in 2013. Charlie has that bull whip slider that has been so effective, especially to the lefties. And there it is down and away in the dirt for ball one. That's been a great pitch for Charlie. Bullpen so effective last year, and it really changed uh, during the course of the year. Brandon League was the closer, and then he struggled, and Tom Wilhelmson took over as the closer, ran with that responsibility. And a little ground ball, easy hopper, Robert Andino, and it's a 1 2 3 top of the eighth inning for the Indians. Nicely done by Charlie Furbush, and we go to the bottom of the eighth here in Peoria. Indians lead 9 to 5.
The Mariners and Indians down in Peoria. The M still trail 9-5 heading into the bottom of the eighth. Hey, tonight after the game, stay tuned to Root Sports for an exciting MLS matchup. Watch the Seattle Sounders FC kick off against San Jose at 730. Available to everyone outside of the Seattle market. Catch all the action only on Root Sports. But of course, not after, not until, I should say, you watch the Mariners put a few more runs on the board. What do you say, Rick Riz? Yeah, looking to uh, score some runs late in the ball game, Jen. These fans are really whipped into a frenzy right now, looking for a late rally. <laughs> Jen, Jen does a great job back at the studio and at the ballpark. Doesn't she, she does. Jen, she you does. all the folks at Root Sports. Yeah, you're right. Angie, and Brad, Brad, Angie, Jen. New Dale. pitcher for the Indians, David Huff. David Huff, the left-hander, six games last season, a three and one record, 3.38 ERA. He had 19 strikeouts in 26 and two thirds innings. And Brad Miller will lead things off for the Mariners here in the bottom of the eighth inning. 30 hits in this game. That's what I could picture you <laughs> rolling down that hill, Rico. That reminds me of one of my grandsons, Braden, would be doing that. He just turned five for Jackson, who's seven. Yeah, he joined the, the berm up there. Oh, he's getting dizzy. But you know what? He's having a great time. Swing and a miss by Miller. 0 oh, and 1 the count. Dave Valley does that all the time, folks, before a ball game, just to get ready. You know, get oh, loose. Oh, kind of loose. Yeah. Swing and a foul off the catcher, Santos, and it's 0 and 2 on Miller. Tom Wilhelmson is warming up down to the bullpen. Miller, 1 for 3 on the day. Here's a look at Big Tom. 29 saves last year. Took over the job as closer halfway through the year. One hopper knocking it down as help. Bobbles can't find the handle. Now he does. The quick throw to first, but not in time. Turned Good. into a hot potato. Good hustle by Brad Miller getting out of the box. Hard hit ground ball right back at David Huff. He's always hustling. He has a high motor. You know, it's always racing. He's got good speed coming out of that left side. Huff just couldn't handle it right off the bat, and then he kind of stabbed at it. Fork didn't go into the ball. Official scorekeeper here just gave the pitcher an error. I disagree. That's, that's a base hit. I'm going to get one to that hopper guy. like that. No way. Yeah, that's what, what booth is he in? Yeah, go, go down there and have a talk with that man. That was a one hopper right back to the mound. That, that's a base hit. Here's Michael Saunders. He has two hits today. First two times up. Let off the first inning with a single. Scored along with Andino on. Base hits by Banyas and Smoke. And the Mariners had an early 2 nothing lead, but the Indians now lead 9 to 5. Michael's had a great approach off the left handers today. A couple of knocks off of Scott Casimir early in the ballgame. I think this is where he has really made some great strides in his approach against left handed pitching. And you had to do the same thing from the righties, and that's. I quite I never I never figured it out though. <laughs> Line drive right center field but right there getting over in time. Is Sid and he makes the catch for the first out of the inning. One on and one away. Let's take a look at our Coors Light freeze camp. And here's that play over at first base on the hot one hopper back to the mound. Awfully tight. Awfully close. Tie? What do you think? Is there a such thing? There is no such thing as a tie. No? No. You either out or you're safe. Right? Well, according to the umpire. <laughs> Correct. What are you doing? Philosophic. Tie? Let's do it again. <laughs> Sorry, it was a tie. Do over. We want to do over. Another hard hit ball off the bat of Michael Saunders. One on, one away. Robert Andino, the hitter, he has two hits today. Out of play off to the right side of the count is 0 and 2. A lot of guys with multi hit games here this afternoon. 30 hits we have seen out here at Peoria. Andino with Baltimore last year. Seven home runs, 28 runs batted in. Play again and the count is still 0 and 2. How about Baltimore last year? We talked about Oakland. Man, they were a surprise winning the West. It wasn't Texas. It wasn't the Angels. Angels didn't make the playoffs. 
And then the Rangers were knocked out in the playoffs in the one game wild card game by Baltimore, which Andino was a member of last year. They were a surprise club. Uh, Buck Showalter, I thought, did a magnificent job managing that ball club, getting the most out of their players. They, they've got a good club, though. I mean, it's not like it came out of nowhere. They've got some good young players on that team. And wait till. Leaders behind the plate, oh. Adam Jones out there in center field. Yeah. They, got, they brought up Manny Machado, the young 19-year-old, to play third base. Very impressive kid. J.J. Hardy, he was a gold glover. And wait till they call up Dylan Bundy. He's a good-looking one. He, he'll, he'll probably be there this year. He came up at the end of the year. I think he pitched the game or two in relief. Their first-round draft pick from, what, a year or two years ago. Yeah, Buck Showalter said he's the real deal. Yeah. He is the real deal. Yeah, a friend of mine is a scout for the Major League Scouting Bureau, and he has all of northern Texas and he saw this kid pitch and he goes man he's going to be a big leaguer no doubt about it. Fouled away off to our right. That's the second one close to the booth. See, and then on the other hand you mentioned the Oakland Athletics. See now I have a different take on them. Last year everything went their way. Everything just kind of fell their way. They had a lot of late inning comebacks a lot of late inning wins. I don't think they're going to do it again. Yeah. But the Rangers last year, Val had a five game lead with nine to play. Popped up behind home plate. Santos, the catcher, might have a play. He does, and he makes the catch at the railing. So two outs for the Mariners here in the bottom of the eighth inning. One thing that the A's had last year in the second half of the season, they led the major leagues in home runs. Chili Davis did a great job yeah. with that club, but, you know, they, they had one of the worst batting averages. Two thirty nine American leagues. Yeah. So you start to look at some of those numbers and you know those home runs came at really advantageous times. I just don't know if you can duplicate well, that again. You know the amazing part about that run in the finish at least for the regular season on the final day they were in first place one day in the regular season that was the final day to win the West but they had four or five rookies in their rotation at the end of the year. I mean, they were doing ball it with every five days. Exactly. That's one thing Billy Bean has done exceptionally well. He has a great eye for young pitching talent. I think a lot of folks, after he made some of those trades last year, dealing away some of the young arms, they're like, well, why, why are you trading these guys? And then all of a sudden you see Tommy Malone show up and yeah. he starts to deal. And He's, all of all of the guys in that rotation were pretty pretty spectacular. Denny Almonte with a pop up out of play on the first base side. He replaced uh, Raul Ibanez. And this year, Aaron's hope to surprise a lot of people here in 2013. Val, we were talking with Felix Hernandez in the second inning this afternoon, and that's exactly what he said. You know what? I think we will surprise some people. But the offense that Jack Sorensic has put together, swing and a miss, make it a foul ball by El Monte, and the count is still one and two. And I was talking to, uh, man, who was it? Jason Bay this morning. And he said, I got a base hit, I'm not I'm at first base. And the first baseman came over, he says, You guys aren't the same team anymore. Certainly, no, they're, they're not. I mean, yeah. as you look at the numbers that they put together this spring, you know, we talked about the extra base hits. The Mariners have 115, 116, and that leads the Cactus League, 115, I, think, I believe they have six today, mm -hmm. leading the Cactus League in home runs. About that, 48 home runs. They had 28 all of last spring. Almonte, foul ball out of play down the left field line, still two and two the count. Denny Almonte, 24 years of age, out of Miami, Florida. Aaron is second round pick, 75th overall in the June 2007 draft. So as you look at some of those numbers that they've compiled this spring, it, it's a it's an indicator as you compare it to last year that they are not the same team. That will, will that translate into the season? We'll we'll find out, obviously. But I, I think going into the season, the level of confidence for this ball yeah. club is very high. And a swing and a miss by El Monte. Strike three, and that will end the bottom of the eighth. We go to the top half of the ninth. It's the Indians nine and the Mariners five.
Top of the ninth inning, Indians lead 9-5. to five. Well, the Mariners' home opener is set for Monday, April the 8th against the Astros. Be on hand for red carpet introductions of first pitch for Mariners legend Jamie Moyer. Fireworks and more, plus all fans receive a magnetic Mariners schedule thanks to Safeco Insurance. Get tickets to opening night at Mariners.com. Rick Riz along with Dave Valley on this gorgeous Saturday afternoon here in Peoria. Mariners and the Indians and the closer Tom Wilhelmson will take over and work the top of the ninth inning. Here's his numbers last year Val. Big, big Tom Wilhelmson 73 appearances a four and three record 29 saves in 34 opportunities. Had 87 strikeouts over those 79 in the third innings. Tommy with that explosive fastball in the upper 90s and that. Uncle Charlie oh, curveball that man. just kind of locks you up. Good night, Irene, with that curveball. And then he's working on the changeup. Ronnie Rodriguez will lead things off for the Indians here in the top of the night. Swing and a miss. Delby Sid do up next. will be followed by Omar Santos. Cleveland winners of. 68 games last year. They went out and spent some money. They spent $56 million on Nick Swisher for a four year deal. They spent about $48 million on Michael Bourne. They also acquired uh, Mark Reynolds. It's uh, a lot of home runs with Baltimore last year. And uh, Brett Myers in the starting rotation. So the Indians spent some money. And Michael Bourne was a, a late sign. A lot of folks were wondering where he would end up. Yeah. I think a lot of folks were surprised that Terry Francona ended up in the Michael Bourne sweepstakes. There's a well hit ball to left field. Danny Almonte going back to the warning track near the wall and he makes the catch. Rodriguez flies out. So one out for the Indians here in the ninth. And here is Delvey Sid. The last time the Indians contended in the American League was back in 2007. That's when Eric Wedge was the manager of the ball club. Pop up, shallow right field. And Dino out, Saunders in. Michael Saunders there in plenty of time, and he's got it for the second out of the inning. Wedge was the American League manager of the year in 2007 with the Indians. He made it to the American League Championship Series. They had that three games to one lead over the Boston Red Sox, but the Red Sox would come back. And win the final three games in that series to move on to the World Series. No base runners off the Mariner relievers this afternoon, Val. Not surprised. Here is Omar Santos, the catcher. The one thing that we saw last year was just that aggressiveness. And when they got out to the mound, they were going right after the hitters, working ahead in the count. And anytime you do that, that's just a recipe for success. Yeah. And it gives your offense a chance to come back and win a ball game. Jam shot off the glove of the pitcher Will Helms, and that's going to die out there near second base, and that'll be a base hit for Santos. Or is it an error? <laughs> Let's go talk to that believe. scorekeeper. I can't believe they charged an error, and that ball hit by Brad Miller leading off the bottom of the eighth inning. That's got to be a hit. Anyway, there's already 31 hits in this game combined. Indians with Maybe 17. That's trying to keep the hit total down. Too late for that. <laughs> Here is Francisco Lindor. One on and two outs. Ball one. Val, you, you caught many, many closers. You have to have that right mentality, that right attitude. To Short do that memory. Job. Short memory. Line drive into the gap in right center field. Santos heading for third. This one will go all the way to the wall. Santos making the turn. He'll score. The throw in is cut off. No relay to third by Andino. And in at third base goes Lindor with an RBI triple with two outs. The Indians now lead 10 to 5. Lindor with a low line drive and rolls all the way out there to the right center field wall. Casper Wells having to play the carom. Allows Lindor to go into third base for a triple. So the Indians tack on another run and now lead it 10 to 5. And the batter will be second baseman Jose Ramirez. Good 
The Indians in recent years have been to the World Series. 1995, they got there but lost to the Atlanta Braves. And again in 1997, they lost to the Florida Marlins. Down low ball two, two balls and no strikes. And they had that lead in game seven. Last Renteria. year, Renteria hit the base hit off of uh, Jose Mesa, Mesa, I believe. Right. You know, the last year the Indians won a World Series, 1948, against the Boston Braves. Really? Yeah. They were still the Braves. They were still in Boston. They didn't move to Milwaukee until 1954, I believe. Swing and a miss by Ramirez. Two, wait, two. Wait a down. second. The Boston Braves. Mm -hmm. We're in the National League in 1948. Spawn, 1948, lost to the Cleveland Indians in the World Series. They went from Boston to Milwaukee, Milwaukee. and then in 1965 they went to Atlanta. 65 or 66. And as Casey Stengel once said, you can look it up. Bouncing ball out to the second base, but up with it. Andino, the throw to first, and it's in time to get Ramirez, and that'll end the inning. But the Indians tack on one more. We go to the bottom of the ninth hour score. The Indians 10 and the Mariners 5. To do in the ninth inning 10 5 the score right now against the Indians elsewhere in the spring training plays and highlights today the Rays and the Twins getting after it fourth inning Tampa shortstop you know Escobar doubles to drive in Evan Longoria the Rays score three in the inning to take the lead Tampa ace David Price goes five innings today he gives up a pair of runs and strikes out seven you know, the Mariners have never faced Price. Maybe this is the year. It wasn't his day, though. Twins win 6-4. to four. The Mariners need a few runs here to avoid the same fate. Rick? They need a bunch, uh, Jen. And Justin Smoke will lead off the bottom of the ninth inning, trailing the Indians by a score of 10-5. to five. That's actually a good thing that you don't have to face David Price. Yeah. American League Sign Award winner. One hopper, and it gets on by... Walters at third. Justin Smoke his third base hit today. A couple of doubles and now a single to left field here in the ninth inning. And Val, he's right on everything from both sides of the plate. Well, and the good the good news for Justin is you don't you don't often get a lot of at bats off of left-handers, but he's gotten quite a few here today. Scott Casimir, and he has just swung the bat and stung the baseball all afternoon. And now here's young shortstop Chris Taylor up from the minor leagues to play in this ball game like he did last night. A strike on Taylor 0 and 1. Cleveland 10 runs now on 18 hits. Mariners five runs on 15 hits. Each side with one error. Curve down and in ball one. One and one on Taylor. Go up next Michael Dowd. 
The one thing the Indians did well last year was win one run decisions. They were 24 and 12 in one run decisions. That was second best in the major leagues. One and two the count. Third into left field, and that's a base hit for Taylor. Down to second goes Smoke, and the Mariners have two on here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And for Chris Taylor, back to back hits last night and here this afternoon. He's got to be thinking, hey, this isn't so tough. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about that, but he's opening up some eyes, and that's what you have to do as a kid. You know, you're down in the minor league camp, and you get a coach come in and say, hey, you're going to be playing up with the big guys this afternoon. This so is his opportunity, no question about it. Get your stuff and show them what you can do. And Chris Taylor has taken advantage of that opportunity this afternoon, along with this young man, Michael Dowd, who replaced the injured Jesus Montero back in the second. Went on that long follow through. The barrel of the bat hit Montero on the side of the head. Fortunately, no concussion. So that was the good news, but. Montero had to be carted off the field, but he's all right. Brown ball to third. Up with it is Walters over to second. They get the force there on Taylor for the first out of the inning. Walters really had to surround that ball, almost tackle it, but he get the, got the force on Taylor at second base. First and third now, one out for the Mariners here in the bottom of the ninth. He starts to he loses his feet right there as that right foot slides out from under him. Couldn't get much on that throw. Not much more the second baseman could do to try to turn a double play. And that'll bring up Casper Wells. And we have uh, a rally hat. That one lone rally hat. Casper one. got hit in the left arm in his last at bat. There's another one. Two. Staying true to the blue. Casper still looking for his first hit here this afternoon. Against uh, the veteran David Huff, who had a scoreless eighth. And now the Mariners have runners at first and third with one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Down and in ball three. Three balls and no strikes. <laughs> Kelly Shopping do up next. Seeing a lot of the Mariners go the distance here this afternoon. Eric Webb starting to get these guys ready mentally to be able to go out there and Play through nine innings, get four or five at bats. And this afternoon, Valley used Tom Wilhelmson for the first time in the ninth oh. inning. Strike call down Wells. Normally, early in the spring, you see the closer come in after the starter because you want to see him face major league hitters who are still in the game in the third or fourth inning. But now it's starting to get more interesting with a handful of games left. Bounce foul past the runner at third, Smoke. Three and two on Wells. Fan gets the souvenir. Popped up, shallow left field. And coming in, the left fielder is there, Lattimore, to make the catch, and the runners have to stay. And now the Mariners are down to their final out here at the bottom of the ninth inning. Two on and two outs, 10 5 Cleveland. And that will bring up Kelly Shopping. My good buddy David Hope from uh, Everett, along with his wife, Kathy Hope, are here at the ballpark uh, this afternoon. How you doing, David? Shopping steps in. Kelly two for four with a single and a double.
Ground ball to third. Walters up with it. He'll go to second for the force there. On Dowd coming down the line, and the ball game is over. The Indians won it this afternoon, a final score of 10 to 5. So for the Mariners, they go to 18 and 9 for the Cactus League season. Cleveland out with a record of 16 and 10. And Val, a lot of runs and a lot of hits in this one. Yeah, we saw that ball rattling all over the ballpark here today. We saw over 30 hits here this afternoon, 15 runs. It was a hitter's paradise here this afternoon, Rick. It sure was. The final score from the Peoria Sports Complex Indians 10 and the Mariners 5. Thanks for watching today. We'll be back with our final spring training game next Saturday when the Mariners take on the Rockies in Salt Lake City at high noon. And don't forget, opening day in Oakland is just nine short days away, April the 1st. Coming up next on Root Sports, Jen Mueller hosts Mariners All Access, and we'll also have more. From Peoria.